Hey, hey, we made it, and only 18 minutes late. Nathan? Yes. Nathan, when we want the Wi-Fi to work tomorrow, or Monday, what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in first, instead of checking everything wrong with the system and then plugging it in after. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to the uh, Knifeware Garage Sale um, preview. Preview, that's what it is. So we're going to do things like look at special knives and all of that. Nathan Garrow, I need your help first off. Okay. Because I need to see where my cameras are, so I need to go to Restream, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can pop you in there. I got it. We've got a new password, so I'll have to punch that in for you. Perfect. Anyway, welcome. So I'm Kevin from Knifeware. We're at the back of our warehouse in Calgary. As you know, Monday is the big start to our garage sale. So our garage sale is the sale that sells all kinds of non-regular items. So um, basically, I go to Japan. Naoto comes with me, or we, or we go separately, and we go and meet with new makers. We meet with old friends, and we buy knives that aren't. Uh, normal stock. So sometimes, sometimes it's uh, a new maker. Sometimes it's a new um, shape that they're trying out or a new line they're trying out. And we just buy up whatever we can and we bring them here and, and sell them for the garage sale. So and sometimes we get some regular products too, like this. I can't tell Nathan are both these cameras on. Yeah, I'm gonna enlarge that one. All right, there you go. How does that work? Is this yeah, good? Can I just show it up here in front of Sony? Perfect. Looks beautiful. Awesome. So this here, for example, is a product we carry all the time from Hanura San, the River Jump. This is the 135 Petty, and I don't know if you can see in there, but right along the edge, there is a bit of Damascus, and there's a whole bunch of Damascus on this side. So the reason Hanura San calls this River Jump is it looks like a river. The Damascus feels like a river, and then there's a blank spot in the middle. Um, Oh, I don't have another one. So usually you get both patterns on on each side, but this one's unique. So it's just got a bit of river. It's got a whole bunch of jump part. Or I mean, I guess the shore over here, a little bit of river right along the edge there. And then all of that Damascus on this side. That is actually probably, I've wanted a Hanura knife for a long time. And uh, I... I have to be, I'm not allowed and the staff are not allowed to buy any knives right at the beginning. Like we have to wait until after the first Monday. So after the first day, they said we have to wait until after that before we're allowed to buy anything. And I'm super bummered about that because I want this knife big time. Big time. Sorry again, like I said, we're a bit late because we had some technical difficulties. Nathan's still working away furiously back there. But he's going to. But he's. Oh, he's mostly eating Snickers. Skittles. We had a lot of Skittles left over. I don't know if you know, but if you watched our TV show called Sharp Knives Rock, that also can be found on YouTube, um, we, had, uh, we had the chopstick challenge where we have to pick up Skittles with chopsticks and make things work. I just got a Skittles MM combo, though, and it was. It's like a really bad chocolate raisin. Do not eat Skittles and MMs together. The flavor combination is very unsatisfactory. Okay, quick news, and then we'll get into this. Nathan will probably start shouting out questions as well. But the garage sale starts May 17th, 8 a.m., Mountain Standard Time. Um, is it Mountain Standard Time right now? Or Mount, we're in Mountain Daylight Time, I believe, right now. I think so. Yeah. Mountain Time. So let's say garage sale starts May 17th, 8 a.m., Mountain Time. So 8 a.m., Calgary, Edmonton Time. Uh, we're going to be live just before that, and we're going to be live for the first six hours of the sale. Call in. When I say call in, I mean... Send us a message on on Instagram on uh, YouTube here. We'll answer your questions. We'll have a scale and uh, uh, ruler and calipers. We can measure knives in every way you might think of. Call, ask questions. We'll try to help you find the real knife, the knife that you want. We'll try to use all the equipment we have to 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 give you an idea of how it feels and how it looks. You can make a a really great educated choice. That starts on Monday, May seventeenth. So Monday coming up at 8 a.m. Mountain Time, probably just before, probably like 7.50, we'll go live. Online, 8 a.m. is when the show is when the sale starts. 10 a.m., the, the, the sale starts in all of our stores. So 
10 a.m. local time. Obviously, the Ottawa store is closed right now because there's a province-wide shutdown. Um, so they won't be having the garage sale, but um, you can watch here. And if you're in Calgary, Edmonton, or Vancouver, obviously you can go and watch the uh, – or go to the, sh uh, go to the sale there. Unfortunately, all the one-of-a-kind and weird stuff is here in the warehouse with us. So if there's something here that's one-of-a-kind and weird and you really have your heart set on it, just grab it first. Go, watch us, press go, buy the thing. It's exactly what you want to do. Um, the sale goes until May 24th, so it's going to be a week plus a day. So it's eight days. So take advantage of us on the last few days. Also, usually by Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, we have extra stuff arrive. So as soon as... Because not everything we've ordered for the garage sales here. So as soon as more things arrive, we will receive them, count them, and they'll hit the uh, inventory. So it'll keep updating probably Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe even Saturday. We'll update some more items. So like I said, on Monday, May 17th, we're going to start live at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. And on Tuesday, Knife 101, which goes at 1 p.m. Tuesday Mountain Time, yep. we'll just have garage sale stuff mostly. Chris Lord's going to join me for that. On Thursday that week at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, we're going to be back. Yep. Be uh, me and Mike probably answering all your things. And I think we're doing something Friday as well for yeah, Nacho's well, nerdy and, hour. And Thursday night, we're, they're going to have a sharpening class after the garage. Oh, okay. I teach you sharp, uh, Japanese kitchen knife sharpening. Cool. So Japanese kitchen knife sharpening will happen after. Nathan, how's my sound? Do I want to move my microphone closer? I probably do. Yeah, how's my check. sound now? We can check. Viewers, let us know in the comments uh, what you think of the sound. That's a good spot on camera. Oh, here, can you see my phone? Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, do you want who wants to look at something cool? Yeah. Do you want to look at something cool? Yeah, we do. How about this? Is this something cool? So this is. I'm gonna say it's Kurosaki, but it doesn't look like his box. It's bright. This is Kato San Yoshimi Kato San, um, Agami Super with stainless steel. Ogami Super with stainless steel. And this is, I like to call them the bowling ball helmets. They're acrylic, and this one's acrylic and wood hybrid. So if you look at this here. Oh, Nato tells me it's R2. I could probably just read. Yeah, it's R2 powder steel or SG2 powder steel. So look at this handle, though, right? I love the shape of his handles. So that's 712 bucks. That's a one of a kind. Do we have these marked on the website somehow? Are they numbered or something like that? How do we know which one the person's there's buying? Pictures. Oh, there's pictures. So click through all the Kato with the special handles, and you'll know which one this is when you see the picture you like. Nathan, is there any way I can make this monitor work? Yeah, we just uh, it locked us out, so we got about four more minutes before we can log in there. All right. Is that reason? Um, yeah, we're looking good. For a small $1,003... We have here the Masashi Kuroshu Yanagiba. It's actually a Sakamaru Taco. I think he calls it a Taco Biki. But usually Taco Biki is a really straight edge, and this one's got a bit of a curve, as you can see. So if you look at it that way, you see it's got a curve. And it's got the tip is like the uh, sword tip, so they call it a Sakamaru. But there you go. That is a white carbon steel Kuro shoe knife, and it's got my handle that I love. I love that water buffalo and uh, burnt chestnut handle. I just think that's a brilliant handle. There we go. That's some of the stuff you'll find at the garage sale. You'll also find, because those were over 700 bucks each, but you'll also find things like this guy. Actually, these guys. So here are a collection of butchery knives here from... Kanetsune Seki. And what we've got here is this pretty wild one. They're a molybdenum vanadium steel. Oh, no, they're not. They're S SKD-12? Oh, that's tougher than I thought. So SKD-12 SKD uh, tool steel. These should actually... At 161 that's a great price. Yeah. <laughs> um, that makes me want them even more, especially this guy, man. Now, I've seen this one called a... Hankatsu, I've seen it called a Hanasuki Maru. We have them What's as the Hanasuki Maru. Oh, we got we, okay, so they're listed as Hanasuki Maru. Hankatsu or the um, 
Sakabone? Sakabone. That's yeah. the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've seen them all under different names, but this is basically a one side sharpened knife, although this side will be sharpened very gently as well. Um, what a great butchery knife. I've used this in restaurants for years, or a version of this in restaurants for years. I love this shape, and I love the danger aspect of it. There's nothing that's going to stop my hand from sliding up the blade and cutting myself to death. Which and I and I, I know that's wrong, but I like that. So these are the what do they call Kanatsuke Seki, or just Kanasune, Kanasune, uh, and this is the Hanasuke. And again, if you look down the spine, I don't know if you can see that a little bit thicker blade. Oh yeah, yeah, it's in focus though. And you can see it's ground on the one side, but more or less flat on that side. Um, cool little blade. If you've never used a Hanasuke. You might want to consider this because, you know, you talk about uh, doing uh, chicken and um, small game like rabbits and stuff is great. In fact, I think all my butchery I can do with that except some really interesting stuff like tunnel bowling a, a pork shoulder or something like that. And I would call this a scimitar. Nauta, what would you call this shape? It's what do we call this shape? I don't know. I can't read that Did language. You know it's Kohagi? Kohagi. It's a skinny knife. Oh. It's a skinning knife. Well, if it was longer, I would call it a, um, a scimitar, and I'd use it for cutting steaks. But this is a skinning knife. But I think, again, this can do some big butchery work for you. So I love this butchery set. And all of them, check it out. I feel like the Home Shopping Network. But check it out. They all have... <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. A sheath. So look at this. You can put the knife in the sheath here and do the... And it goes on your belt. Look at that. Ha! I know John Lung in town here, he likes that. He likes to have his knife on a sheath. But he had to get it specially made. He's got a utility belt, I think. Oh, see, really? Yeah. <laughs> if there's anything on the website you have wanted to see, anything that's excited, you let me know. And we'll and we'll get to those, too. If you got any questions, let us know in the comments. And here we go. So we've got some Takeda knives. And I know there's some folders too. Has anyone seen the Takeda folders? There they are. I got them there. It's not going to look amazing, but there's your... Uh, oh, that. There we go. Look at that. So here we've got some fixed knives. Knives? Fixed knives from Takeda-san. Gee, oh, that's a better spot. There we go. Fixed knives from Takeda-san. Again, typical Takeda-san knife with his, it says NAS, which is the new style of blade he does. It's got carbon steel, Algami Super Core, and then it's got stainless wrapped around it. And it's also got his heart on the, on the handle, or on the blade there. Typical Kurochi finish Takeda stuff. His hunting knives, obviously a lot more thick on the spine than there is his kitchen knives. And I have no idea what this handle is. This is it's some kind of white burl, like maybe some kind of a white birch burl. But I really, I'm, I, if you've watched us at all, you'll know I'm a huge fan of Takeda Sands knives. His fixed blades, his folding blades, and his hunting, and his uh, kitchen knives. I like all of them. I'm a fan of his. I like how he forges. I like how he thinks about knives. I like that he, he always has a, a new original thought about his process and how to make it better. So this one here is an antler. Look at that. And it's got so it's it's kind of like a hego, so it's got a liner lock. You pull that to the side, and the knife folds up. So it looks kind of like a hego because it's got the uh, the spike that sticks out here. My band-aid. Isn't that good? That's what a knife seller has. Anyway, there's a little spike that sticks out the back, and that's how you open this thing up. Boom. And then it's got the liner lock to lock it in place. Every time Takeda San makes a hunting knife or a folding knife, they're a one of a kind. They are, they are a knife that uh, there is no match to it. There's just like, here is the one I made, <laughs> and here is another one that's similar maybe, but again, one of a kind. Usually Takeda-san, well, Takeda-san makes the blades, and then a buddy his makes the handles. This one here, for $826, that last one was $750, by the way. This one's $826. Look at this. Again, it's got the liner lock. Um, do you know what material this is? 
Nathan, do you know what material this is? Oh, this, this took it, 40,000 years to make. Tooth? Yeah. Oh, so I this is those. this is mammoth. Now, sometimes they say tooth and sometimes they say ivory. Mm. Now, I don't know. Is that the same thing? I don't know. No. I don't know. I've kind of wondered that. Because well, mammoth would have teeth as well. Yeah. But there you go. So, and it's, this is called the bark because it's got the texture from the outside of the, uh, of the uh, tusk as well. How cool is that? Mammoth ivory? Oh, my God. And this one is a man-made material, and he calls it honeycomb. I don't know really what it is, but it's kind of grippy. And you can see it's got the honeycomb pattern there. And, again, it opens, and he's got a little finger groove here, a thumbnail groove to pop this knife open, and it's got a back lock on it. This one's $622, and someone's banging on the door, which means they're probably picking up a delivery. And it's going to be there? really loud for a while. <laughs> so I'll shout over top of it. Here, let's look at some more Takeda hunting blades. 715 are all these fixed blades. They're all $715. I like these stabilized wood handles. I like the shape of them, and I like the look of them. And here, oh, if I was going to pick one, and I think I might, it's going to be a pink one. Look at this one here. If you guys have been watching ever, you know that I'm a sucker for pink handles and pink stabilized wood. And again, I like the swell in it. I like how they feel in my hand. Takeda-san, he knows a secret. He knows how to take all of my money from me. He knows how to make stuff that I just love. So put those two away. There we go. His sheets, actually, this is interesting to note as well. Takeda-san's sheets are interesting because they have a lot of wood inside the sheath. So you can see there's wood here so that if the knife does cut, it's not going to cut through the leather or the stitching. It cuts into the wood. So there you go. So the wooden frame inside the leather sheaths. Really a clever move. And this one, a friction fit, and it's a good friction fit. These ones obviously have a, have a button and a, and a strap. There you go. Look at that. Woo! I, uh, I'm so excited now whenever we see these, uh, these um, stabilized wood handles come in. They get me all jazzed up. And I don't know. This is another. Oh, this is a pack of wood. Look at this. Look at the pattern when they, uh, when they um, sand this down. The pattern of this pack of wood comes out. It's really cool looking. Look at that. It's just it's just straight packa wood like that. Nice. I was on the pattern with packa wood. Yeah, it's interesting how the, how the pattern comes out, and it and it's and it's so um, if it's not straight, like if it's rounded, the pattern comes out in a really uh, unique ways. We got a question from Ellipses. Uh, Kevin, I assume you didn't get any uh, Ishime AS this round. Ah, you are right. We tried Ellipses. We tried big time. To get that, I ordered them in November at the last garage sale, and uh, but we'll get them for next garage sale next November, so that's good. Um, can you talk about Shizu Hamono a little bit, Brad Cook? Do you know who's going to talk about? Oh, Whoa, I don't know what I've done there. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to change my view here now, so so I, or Nathan, so I can see comments. Yeah, no worries. Um, there we go. Hey. What can you say about uh, Shizu Hamono? Well, I can tell you I'm holding it in my hand. But here, this is this is a thing. Um, in the last few years, Naoto's been helping me a lot with, with ordering. And um, what we've got now is I deal with the people I know well. And Naoto deals with some of the, some of the newer uh, makers that I don't know as well or haven't met. Because Naoto managed to get to Japan before they closed in uh, January last year, but I haven't been since October. We made some new contacts then, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually get a chance to meet anybody. So Nauto is going to have to tell us something about this. Nauto, who's standing over there, running around, getting me things to look at. 
Anyway, he's brought me this wonderful knife. It's a VG10. It's 215 dollars. 215 bucks. Yeah. So it's 215 dollars for um for a 210 Guto. Really well made for very affordable. Good reasonably priced. Yeah, where where are they, Kanato? So this is from Seki. It's very reasonable, very reasonably priced. Uh Little blades. Can I get closer? Does it focus if I get closer? Yeah, it looks good. So they have anywhere from a 130 mil petty all the way to 240 guto. There we go. So we got a 240 guto and a 130 petty and 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 all stops in between, it sounds like. So you see the Damascus there? And then this uh, hammered finish, Karochi. And I like that's a sweet blade. I can't believe it's 215. That seems like a lot of knife for 215 bucks, to be honest. Like that seems like a really good value in my mind. Uh, Fred Boshara Jr. is hey, wondering Fred. about those. If you, you can show more of the Kurosaki oh. Ho -Oh. Are they some type of rainbow Damascus? The picture, side of the pictures on the side are good, but I can't see the nuances in the steel. They want to see the real Look what's action. look what's in my hand. How strange. It's almost like we knew that question was coming. It is a rainbow Damascus. Now if anybody knows about Rainbow Damascus, I'll tell you the quick history of the Rainbow Damascus. Nathan, can you get the colors in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah okay, great. Especially the way you're holding it right now. Perfect. So the uh, the Rainbow Damascus was a, was a steel that was developed with Saji. So it's from Takafu Steelworks, Takafu Specialty Steels, um, and worked with Saji on that one. And what they did was originally, Saji was telling me that, Saji-san was telling me that uh, they wanted Agami Super Core, with stainless Damascus on the outside. But to forge that and get the core steel hard and then make the Damascus pop is, is really, really difficult. So what they did instead. So here's the Saji one. So we need to look at the Saji one side by side. So this is the Saji one, and this is the uh, Saji over here and Kurosaki over here. Anyway, what happened was they wanted to make Damascus, stainless Damascus over top of a carbon steel core. And what uh, they finally decided on was they were gonna make this rainbow Damascus that's layers of stainless steel, copper and brass. And uh, it was first, it was just Saji using it, but now Hinori uses it sometimes and Kurosaki sometimes. I think that's it though. I don't think I've seen anyone else use this stuff. The, cat, the, the Kurosaki one, if you can see, Super, super thin blade. Look at this. So it almost vanishes there. So a very thin blade. And, uh, oops, I'm in the wrong box. I like that one. The Saji knife, a little bit thicker on the spine. Now, Saji, you understand, has made his uh, his name. And this, is, and this, again, is the real Saji one. This is Agami Super with the stainless rainbow Damascus on the outside. The other one, the, the Kurosaki was VG10. 445 for the Kurosaki, 559 for the Saji. Saji um, made his big, big, big name in knives as a hunting knife maker. So a little bit of that comes through here just in the way that it's a bit thicker spine. This is a knife that's built for a little bit more work, I'd say. This one here is what sometimes people on the internet call a laser. Or somebody who watches here sometimes calls them a strawberry scalpel. Yeah, that's a, that's a real gorgeous knife. Um, speaking of gorgeous mm. knives, uh, we're looking at that Danka 240. Wondering how thin it is. Uh, can I want to take a look down there? Nicholas Cabano is wondering that. Uh, are they generally thinner than the Maburoshi? Uh, sorry, I asked about the thinnest last time, but I didn't get to see it. All right. I'm going to put the microphone here so that Nathan and I can both be heard. Make sure that the yeah. correct button's pressed at the back. Oh, there we go. That's like a podcast. It's like a podcast. Between two knives. Okay, so this, you can see how thin it is down the spine. And somewhere in here, I've got calipers. So let me open this box here and see, see if I can figure out how to use these calipers. This is Mike's game, <laughs> his caliper playing. He's into caliper play, eh? I made a cosplay. All right, this is a this is a wacky machine. Look at this, this great little machine. Lovely. So let's see 
How thick is, is the spine of this no, you don't have one. knife? No, it doesn't make sense. Okay, it's 2.33 millimeters right there. And then towards the tip, it's 1.08. So it goes from 2.33 even if we to 1.08 at the tip. So there we go. Hope I hope that answers your questions about the thickness of that knife. It's it's a remarkably light and well balanced knife. Like I, I, uh, I'm a fan of this. And now we asked Saji san, or uh, sorry, Fujiwara san, to put the finger notch in here because uh, that's not generally what he does on his on his um, um, Japanese or wall handled knives. We've asked him to because I really like the feel of it. And would you say the Denkas are generally thinner than the Maburoshi or not so much? You know what? They're handmade product, right? So. Sometimes they're thinner, and sometimes they're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, an right? accurate answer, and that's it's that's that's what happens with a man-made or a, a handmade product is that it. Uh, that's that's uh, yeah, some of them are thinner, some of them are thicker. That's how it is. Um, that one there, I can tell you, is exactly two hundred and thirty-three or two point three three millimeters wide at the uh, at the heel there, and then at the spine or the spine at, at the toward the front is one point oh eight. Um, real quick, John May was saying those katos are not actually up yet. I believe they are John May right now, though. The, Some of them the, are, for sure. Uh, Kiritsuke Bunka. But they're listed as a Kiritsuke Bunka, so they might be confusing. Oh, oh. Is that this oh, one here? But we'll, we'll double check, John. Yeah. Yeah, so this is... Well, this is Kurosaki. You wanted the Kato one, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a Kurosuke Bunka. That's a funny name. <laughs> so here we go. For seven hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. For a second, I thought that's a the, uh, R2 Damascus. Ah, uh, the pictures aren't up oh, yet. Oh, the pictures aren't up yet. Yeah. We took yeah, the uh, well, we by yesterday and took all the pictures. Yeah. yeah, Mason was here yesterday and took all the rest of the pictures. So we're trying. We're trying to process them and get them up. That's one of the things about garage sale. It's a really speedy thing. Because we get them in a lot of the times last minute, and we have to just take the photos as fast as we can, and then get them set up online. It's a it's a bit of work for us, but we do the best we can to get it uh, up early. And of course, there everything will be ready for the first of the, the first of Monday. So here's the shape of the handle. I like how it goes and has that beautiful contour to it. I like this shape here with the hook at the back, really reminiscent of. Um, the uh, Moskogi Zero handles and some of the handles that Saji san makes. So there you go. There's your Kiritsuki Banka. And this one, I, ca I call this root beer. I don't know what this material is called, but I've decided <laughs> to call it root beer, root, beer. Like, root beer. Root beer. Look at it. Root beer float, because there's like that little bit of ice cream at the bottom. Yeah, it's got the it's got the ice cream here, which is uh looks like it's some kind of birch burl. And then we've got the root beer acrylic. I'm a fan of the root beer acrylic always. Um, am I looking at that one again, Nathan? Uh, no, that's just your own box there. Um, Sean Buckle, I believe, was asking, this might be more of a joke than an actual question, but he's saying, so how many tanks are available? Can you pass me that box, Nathan? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. We can, we can don't, open don't that. Don't tell anyone about this, though. We can open that. Oh, fuck, that's heavy, dude. Uh, All right. Yeah. Hello. So we... Um, We've got a box here full of Tinker Tanks. We haven't opened it yet, so I don't know how many are in it yet. We've just been letting them age, sort of. Yeah, because the thing is, right, with uh, with Tinker Tanks, they're not good for the first one. No, they're Starting really green. <laughs> just go, hey, look who walked in. Can you see him? Hey, look at that. Look at that guy with the big beard. It's a wizard. All the hair. It's a Everybody. wizard. Gandalf has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing his best Nick Cave in the Bad Seed shirt with a naked Nick Cave with his willy hanging out. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than Nick Cave's willy. Uh, so there you go. That's Jeffrey, also called Horace and Jasper, and Tremendous. So if you buy beard care stuff at Kent of England, it says Tremendous. It's the man that makes it. And if you see, uh, if you see like the leather knife wallets and the leather knife rolls that we sell, 
at uh, Knife Wear. That's uh, that's the man who makes those things. Uh, B what did Din? he bring? What did he bring? Did he bring some oh, yeah, fun? Bring us? Now, so, did he bring bags? us some knife bags? Um, not sure. <laughs> Uh, while well, we're looking at that, uh, beat in, or maybe it's Biden, uh, eyeing up the Anru white number two. It's a nice knife. I'm eating an apple. Mmm. So we're going crunch in your we, ear for a bit. We can get the mic real close up while you <laughs> eat that apple. <laughs> All right. Here is the Anru San white number two, $236, 210 millimeter Guto. Karochi, as you see, black, and it's got Damascus. So you can see the Damascus pattern right there. Um, what was I going to say about that? I don't know what I was going to say about that. That's a nice there day. it is. Yeah. There it is. Ta -da. <laughs> um, Anderson has retired recently, so this might be one of the last ones that he uh, had his hands on, although I know Anderson's version of retirement means he's there three days a week still. So it's like retirement, but when I retire, I'm going to retire differently. He's not just retire, drinking beers on the golf course. I'm going to retire more fully. I'm going to have, have retire with a bicycle under my butt and a fishing rod in my hands every day. Now, look at this. This is something we need. This reminds me of something you buy at MEC made of red plastic. It's for digging holes when you go hiking. So you can leave your uh, deposits on the mountain. But this is called a hori hori. So if you look down this way, you see it's a little bit scooped, this this knife, and it's serrated on the one side, and it's got a bit of an edge on the other. And it's got measurements. Can you see that? It's got these measurements here. It's got all the centimeters up to, you know, 5, 10, 5, or sorry, 5, 10, 15 centimeters. So it, this is a gardener's knife. So you can dig holes, plant things, and you can see how deep you might want to plant it, right, by using that. Or if you need to cut through something, that's really aggressive. That'll, that'll yeah. cut through, I don't know. I think it would cut through little bamboo stakes pretty easily, I bet. Huh. And, and and all the little bits of string that I seem to endlessly need to cut when I'm gardening. Anyway, it's called a hori hori. And it's free, this one, because there's no price tag on it. So there you go. That is the best price. Yeah. I doubt it's free. Now, to any idea what a hori hori is? 42 bucks. Oh, fuck. Right on. I'm actually going to take one of these home. I'm not going to take one home today because I want to, uh, but I can't take one home today. But I'm going to take one of these home right away because it's gardening season and 42 bucks is something I can't live without. Yeah, no kidding. I assume now I'm looking at two and probably comparing two petties. Yeah, here. Spoon Monkey says can't stay, so I'm asking this now and I can catch up in the morning. Are there any 80 or 90 millimeter petties in the sale? Well, ask and you shall receive. We've got an 80 and an 80. So this one's from Maratasan. I have a special place in my heart for Murata Sans and I, especially the Western Handle ones, because this is the first handmade Japanese knife I've, I, well, I ever bought. Um, this would have been back in 2001 or two, maybe. Um, but there you go. It's uh, Algami number two, Kurochi finish. And it's Algami number one. Now, to, why do you have to be so specific when we could just be almost specific? <laughs> <laughs> why do you need to be so specific all the time now? This is why I can eat my apple. My brain's getting tired. It's Algami 1. Thank you, Nalto, for being specific. Um, and thank you for being specific. And then we've got these ones from Camosan. So this is Camosan in Takefu. VG10. And I love these pack of wood handles. I know Ellie's got one of these, too. And she's, if you've bought anything on the internet, you've probably had a conversation with Ellie at some point. But she's got one of these. She's got the uh, 240, I think, Uto, and she loves it. It's uh, it's a little workhorse. Doesn't rust. And the Packer would handle. I uh, tested one, <coughs> and I stuck it through the dishwasher three times. No, that handle I stuck through seven times. And uh, it hasn't changed. It got, it got less less shiny. It got more dull looking. But the Packer wood and stainless combinations really, like the VG10 stainless combination with the Packer wood is, is more or less indestructible. I'm a huge fan of those. Huge fan. Oh yeah, this one's. Can you see? Yeah. Can you see the texture in that? Oh yeah, look at that. So this. So shiny. Yeah. So the texture in that is is what's the big deal for me. Now this is the. I'm guessing Saji. It doesn't say yeah, here on my box, but I'm guessing this is Saji's Rainbow Damascus. 
Can somebody tell me if this is Saji or Kurosaki? Saji. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't say. Sorry. But I thought it was. That texture. So it's it's rainbow Damascus and textured VG10. And it's got what I call a reverse handle. So it's got the dark. Hmm. What kind of wood is this? Uh, rosewood with the... Uh, it is rosewood, paca. huh? With white paca. But it's sustainable rosewood. Oh, I'm glad we get to do a lot of paperwork for these now. <laughs> so it's fun. Hey. Love. Thank you, Gibson Guitars, for ruining everything. While you got that in your hand, John May's asking, uh, the Saji Rainbow Damascus looks like it has a bit more surface topography on it, while Kurosaki's looks smoother. Yes, exactly. And the, the two that I had are different. So this one here has got is more of a high polish and it's got little tiny dimples in it whereas the other one i had earlier oh there we go so these are the same so this is this is it so this is saji's two looks for the uh the knives here right so we've got this guy but moving forward and you can see he's got a little texture on there too but a very different look than this one so this one's got a polished and dimpled look and he's exposed the damascus differently in both of these uh but they both have they both have a little what do you call it, surface topography yeah yeah texture there's a little bit of texture not this one this one not as much but the uh the kurosaki ones are smooth and polished um good question from ellipses not quite garage sale related but the single bevel hanasukis generally have a recessed backside like a deba or are they just totally flat it depends on the maker so we're talking about Honosukis, and uh, now I was looking for one to put in my hand. <laughs> but they are, it depends who made it. This is the uh, more traditional. Yes, yeah, the more traditional. And so if you, you look, on this one. if you look, this one here is flat on the back. It's not rounded out. But Fujiwara's will be, for example, when, I, when you see them. But the front of this, you can see, oh, I don't know if you can tell the grind on this. From this angle, you can see it starts to grind right there, and then it's got the concave, like or convex, sorry, convex edge like that. Um, and the back is flat. On some of the more, uh, some of the nicer handmade ones, you'll find the back is scooped out like that. And this is a Garasuki. Here we go. So this is a. Sakai Takayuki, but it's a Garasuki, so single bevel, right? You can see down the uh, choil there. And this back is... Can you, can you see? Oh, that's hard to see. Yeah, it's, it's not like getting focused on monitor. that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. A little bit. I don't know if it's going to come through on YouTube, but... But there is... There is a, the back is, is concave. Uh, again, hand hammered, handmade knife is, is a little bit different than a $161 factory one. This is $404. And a Garatsuki is just a bigger Hanasuki. And Garatsukis are generally single bevel, but not always. We do have a Hanasuki version of that as well. Oh, we, it, and we have a Hanasuki version of that Sakai Takiyuki, but it's, uh, but it's lost. It's buried somewhere. It's buried somewhere. We'll find it soon. Are I there am, any Nathan Garrow? I'm looking like up? super overexposed and shiny. I know. I turn off like all Did the other. Turn that practical. one off. Maybe we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it scoots up the lighting on our knife cam. Do you want to hold well, up? Why don't knife? you put? Do you the, hold up why don't you just point quick? it down? Yeah. Do you want to hold up a knife real quick? All right. And then I'm just going to enlarge it. Oh my God. Sorry, we're doing all of our technical stuff. Nope. Mm. Look better. Yeah, it's not too different. It's also just our, uh, this good old webcam is okay, <laughs> but I have a potential solution for for Monday to oh, overexpose good. you less. Good, because I'm feeling quite It's exposed. also these incredible uh, fluorescent overheads that we have <laughs> in this beautiful industrial warehouse of ours. I'm guessing somebody's asking about some Yes, Spoon here. Monkey said, uh, also, are there any super thin stainless 135 millimeter pennies? All right, so we've got three okay. here. We've got three oh, petties here. This one looks bigger than 130, maybe. What, what size is this one? 150, right? These other ones are 135. So we've got a Takamira, 
VG10 for 150. It's a 135. We've got an SG2. It's 319 from, oh, it's Kobayashi. Oh, yeah, of course it is. That's interesting because I've seen this knife too many times with a red paca funny shaped handle that I like. And I don't know how to describe it better than funny shape, but my uh, my nephew has it. He saved his money from his uh, farmer's markets job to buy a uh, one of these. I and If you've ever read the blog that I wrote about my uh, Kobayashi Damascus knife with the <laughs> custom handle, I'm a fan. This is, this is my kind of blade, right? It's very thin. It's uh, powder steel. Just cuts like a laser. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of these ones. And then we've got an R2 from, feels like a Kurosaki box. It is. It's a Kurosaki Senko. I don't know if we can see that in there. Look at that pattern. Woo! So there you go. R2, 241, 319 for the R2 or SG2. Same thing. Uh, and VG10 for 150 from Takamura. Sweet. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, uh, Sean Coots just said, Hi, Sean Coots. Law handled Danka Santoku question mark? Oh, ta-da! Asking you shall receive. Yeah, there's this guy here. If you want to talk about wa-handled uh, wa wa handled Fujiwara Dankas. I love his new shape. A couple of years ago, he changed the shape and made it more, uh, more kind of Bunka-esque at the front, less rounded. And I think it's got a really menacing look. To match, Fujiwara Sans, menacing face on the box <laughs> he knows he's got a stern face so he plays it up and uh, I remember I took I took this picture of him years ago but he told me I have to tell everyone well, let's see if we get it focus he told me I have to tell everyone that those are Gucci sunglasses so there we go Gucci sunglasses very important to know um, this is a Masashi look at this this is a Masashi Deba. It's a 165. It yeah, is. That's for Lorenzo. For Lorenzo. A polished spine. A super polished and carved out choil. Obviously rounded. Oops. Obviously rounded on the bottom here. Curved on the back side. This surface here is curved as well. <laughs> and that's a white number two. Honosuke, or not Honosuke, sorry, uh, 165 Deba. He's asking if it comes with a Masashi. burnt handle, but I don't think we have that Masashi Deba with a burnt handle, right? Not the Debas. Uh, we have a... The Debas don't have the burnt handles, no. Okay. But we can always... Well, I don't want to say that because we don't actually have any burnt <clears> handles <throat> in stock, and I, getting handles no. right now, getting anything right now is hard. For, for, especially Deba is hard. Getting anything is hard right now. Uh, you've That's probably went to other stores and know this. So that one was three hundred and forty-five dollars. This is now a white number two or Shigami knee. Seven hundred and forty-five dollars for the Sakamaru Takabiki again. And this one has got the burnt chestnut and water buffalo uh, horn. Yeah, not sure who asked about that one. Uh, nobody asked about this, but they're asking oh. about that handle. Oh Nathan. yeah, perfect. There we go. Nathan, don't be confused. It's fine. <laughs> it's only a thousand comments. Um, thanks there for is your a number of comments. I'm watching them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just watching. Thanks, them thanks for your up. patience, everyone. We're doing um, our best to keep up, which means yeah. we'll only be about 45 minutes behind. Um, <laughs> we're never going to catch up, Nathan. DJ I'm Sergio, eat an apple. D let's talk about something. Yeah. So DJ Sergiotto is asking, Kevin, can we please see the Rainbow Damascus from Hinora San? But I don't think that is a thing we have, is it? We don't have any, like, we he don't makes them, but we don't have any in stock. Yeah. So I can't show you that. Sorry, buddy. Um. While uh, while everyone's uh, waiting for your question to be answered and we're, we're <laughs> munching on apples, uh, just so you know, the garage sale, if you didn't hear us say it already, the garage sale starts Monday, May 17th at 8 a.m. Mountain Time uh, on knifeware.com. We do have a small component in the Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver stores. And that starts at 10 a.m. local time. But if you want something real fancy or custom or something crazy, uh, definitely go online. If you are in one of those cities, uh, you know, head into the shop. But it's going to be a more limited selection. Okay, so this one is a little ways up. Uh, that was somebody asking about a Kurosaki with some green in it. Looking, he's either looking for a Cobalt or R2 Kurosaki 240 Guto wah handle with some green. With some green, green color, you mean? Yeah, that's exactly. the one. So we've got a 240. Is that 240? 
240, yeah. That feels like a 240. I like this handle. I like how long Dustin makes those handles. Well, we don't have them. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Oh, Nato, no, no, you've done Nato, you've done a really nice job of putting these handles oh, in. Yeah. I don't know if you Thanks. can see this. But Nato's uh, epoxied no, the ends here like uh, like yeah, Takeda Sam does. Okay. And it's the so same epoxy cool, Takeda so. Sam does, so I know we know it works door? well. Yeah. Okay, so we've got one of these multi uh, kind of handles. It's got purple, red, natural, <laughs> red, green, turquoise, and then more of this natural wood. It's a cool little handle. Octagons, like always, and uh, this is the uh, this is the Sasame 240 Uto. Um, before you get onto the next knife, there, Adam Yarbo. And this one's R2 Sasame. No, it's not Sasame. This is Raishin. Yeah, that, that one's Bunker. for for another question. But Adam Yarbo was looking for the Muji A2 and the 240 Anru, um, but those ones are in uh, other stores, unfortunately, Adam. <laughs> Um, but you can view pictures online. If they're not up now, they will be up over the weekend. Um, uh, Andrew 240, do we have that? Yeah, which one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it just says uh, Andrew 240. Uh, same with Albert. I'm looking for a DOI 225 Uto. Um, unfortunately, uh, Albert, those are in one of our stores as well. So we don't have them here to show you. But yeah, Adam's looking at that 240 Anru. Yeah, sorry guys. We don't have every single knife from the website here at the warehouse. Because we have to ship some stuff to the other shops, too. We have to let them have fun sometimes, right? Um, I'm looking at this Anru San now. Is that it? Uh, yeah, the 240 Anru. So this is Algami Super with stainless steel cladding. Hammered. Hammered look to this one of the Tsuchime from Anru San. An, uh, an oval handle. There you go. And uh, nicely polished, nicely polished on the spine and the choil here. I uh, always, I've always been a sucker for Anderson's knives. I think he's a great guy, but I really, I'm a sucker for his knives. I just, he just, he just takes care, you know. And uh, I love watching Anderson work when he was when he was forging all the time. He never moved fast. Katosan would move fast, 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 and then lose his tongs, and then fastly search for his tongs, and then move <laughs> fast, 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 and then get all disorganized. Just moved his hands faster. Anderson just went, oh, I don't want to move fast. I want to move slow. But nothing's wasted. There's no effort ever wasted. It's very uh, efficient watching him work. Um, for some reason, I've got this in my hand again. Saji, Algami 2, and Stainless Rainbow Damascus 180 Guto is in my hand. Like I said, this one's a bit more of a workhorse, a little bit thicker on the spine, which means it's going to take a bit mm. more Yeah, that's, that's CB like, that wanted to I'm see a, it. I'm a fan of these guys. You know what? It's nice to have thin blades that cut like lasers off. You know, it's nice to have that, but it's also nice to have a few that just work harder, right? Yeah. Like if I had to pop the head off a trout, oh with yeah, this I would not even think about it a second. And uh, CB, and for anyone who's not seeing a photo of the knife they like on the website, uh, just stay tuned. They will be up by Monday. Um, and if and it's if it's not up by Monday morning, shoot me a quick email and I'll I'll make it happen. Uh, Peter Brown. Did mention that uh, Kurosaki Raijin Bunka. Did you get to show that off there, Kevin? I did. Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Right here. Let's take another look at that. That's a pretty knife. Oh, such a pretty knife. So we're gonna just try to flash it around so we get a little, we get a little excitement in the uh, excitement of oh, there we go. Excitement of the uh, light bouncing off of it. Uh, Nato, are we getting any Takeda Gutos? No, unfortunately not. Okay. Yeah, we had a question from Sean Buckle. Unfortunately, no Takeda Gutos. We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying to get as much as we possibly yeah. can. We, um, we ordered some. The problem is, and that's and that's one of the things about garage sale is, is that, you know, our makers also, they know when we're doing stuff for garage sale. And if they're really, really busy, they'll just put the garage sale stuff off to the side <laughs> Yeah, exactly. when they feel like it, right? Because it's because it's extra work or extra, you know, unusual products or something like that. So yeah, we can't we can't uh, fault them for that, for trying to take care of their normal and, and everyone, inventory instead. Everyone's been great in the comments so far, but if you are asking, Except you. <laughs> except <laughs> everybody's been great except John. He was shit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm just going to say, if you're asking to look at a specific knife, um, I am awful with knife nerd slang, so if you use any shorthand, I probably won't know what you're talking about. So if you can take the time to type out the full description, that way we'll be able to definitely grab the right knife for you, and I really appreciate it. Uh, CB says, sorry to insult, but Chris, uh, uh, sorry to insult Chris, 
but Kevin looks like John Lord from Deep Purple. Sounds like it insults me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're insulting Chris by saying that. I'm rocking what I call my COVID haircut. You like it? I haven't had a haircut since uh, January 2020. 2020. Oh. Yeah, so maybe I'm just, I think I'm just going to rock this long. I might take the beard off. Maybe I'll take the beard off for Monday. Look like a baby again. All right, I just yeah. grabbed some things that I like. Yeah, why not? This is the, I believe it's Sakai Takuki cleaver. Mm -hmm. No, who makes this cleaver? Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah. It is Sakai Takuki. Yeah. All right. Oh, I guess it says it on there. I could have just read it. This is just a really uh, reading proper card. European style meat cleaver. Big fan of that. It's a great price. It's $134. They used to be $192. Why are they so cheap now, though? There's a little bit. Of, well, look at the handle. Look closer. Oh, this one in particular is. Okay, there we go. There's a little gap here with the handle and the steel. So we've uh, we put this one on for 134 instead of 192. So there you go. That'll probably be in the scratch and dent section. The uh, yeah, 90 year old uh, maker can't keep up with the quality. It's a 90 year old maker. 80 something. Sorry. I, so that's I made by an 80 some year old blacksmith in in Sakai, and Nelson just said he can't keep up with the quantity. And make them perfect like he used to. Huh. So there you go. Now I want it more. <laughs> so yeah, we, we got and at 134, smoking deal, smoking deal. Uh, we've got a couple of chicobochos here. So think more like a, a vegetable cleaver, right? Yeah. So we've got the VG10 Makusta Zanmai with this wild handle that's kind of round and kind of octagon at the same time. And the Damascus, I uh, can I get that pattern to pop in there. Look at that. Oh, I always love sexy Damascus. And we've got this one, Algami Super with stainless steel from Kurosaki. Let's get the light to flash on. There we go. So you can see the pattern of that. So it's Algami Super with stainless on the outside. It's four hundred fifty-two dollars, and a Chinese chef's knife, as we call it. It might be called Chukabocho. On the website, does anyone know what this one's called on the website, Nathan? Uh, Nato, is that called a chukabocho there? I think so. I yeah. Think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, TJ Ronan wanted to see that one in specific. Oh, well, there you go, TJ. Yeah. TJ out in uh, the UK, I believe, right? Oh, nice, TJ Ronan. Yeah. I used to live in the UK. I used to live in London for years. I worked at a place called St John. I cooked a lot of roasted bone marrow, Nathan Garrow. Yeah. Oh, you and I ate there. Did we you? did eat there. It was delicious. Oh. Yeah, we drank too much. <laughs> a little bit too much. <laughs> uh, do we have the Makoto Kurosaki 240 secure, secure there? Somebody want? Uh, yeah, it's somewhere. Th this is just a little while ago, but uh, well, we'll grab that in a sec. Somebody called Calgary Knifeware. I, I don't know who that is. Says uh, how stainless or not are the Kanetsune knives in SKD12? Sorry, Calgary Knifeware. Yeah, Nathan. It's I mean, no, to. It's semi stainless steel. It's semi stainless. It's SKD12. Yeah. So it's the same as our other SK12 knives. Yeah. Uh, same as VS1. Or yeah. VS1, yeah. Real... So I'm going to eat my apple again. Yeah, no worries. Real quick, can we bump that uh, Makoto Kurosaki Sakura in there for Dennis uh, Ehrensberger? Just oh. wanted to get a look at it. Nothing, nothing else, nothing crazy. I am um, a huge fan of these handles. They look really modern with the blonde and, and light color. That looks like American cherry. And white pack of wood or blonde pack of wood. Octagon handle, 317 bucks. So this is not you, Kurosaki. This is Makoto, his brother. It's SG2 powder steel. And this one he calls Sakura. So it's got the cherry wood handle. And look in the box. You get a little bit of paper Sakura blossoms when you buy his knives from Sakura line. So I think that's cute. I like that. All right, I've uh, got two Nikiris in front yeah. of me. I've got the uh, Anderson Algami Super. Uh, I'm not sure whose question that was. I'm just finding out. Uh, but James Wang has a question with the garage sale. I saw there will be a 270 River Jump and a 180 Shigafusa Guto. Uh, are they actually going to be on the sale, or is it just mislabeled? No, those aren't mislabeled, but we don't have them anymore. They gotcha. <laughs> right. <laughs> those, are, those are leftovers from last garage sale. Yeah, that makes so sense. So sometimes there's, yeah... 
there's so many products in there and some of them are left over from last time and some of them hang out there because we'll be getting them back again but the river jump is not available and what was the other one um the asked for was the other one uh, shigafusa one? Guto. yeah we don't have a shigafusa Guto. yeah sorry james here this, we do have a shigafusa i've got it in my hands here Oh, yeah. 240 Usuba. Yeah, we have 240 Usuba. I have never ever seen a 240 Usuba from and this is from Shigafusa. So I we snapped this up when we heard it was available because it's so bizarre. Right? Look at that. So if you need a Shigafusa, we've got a 240 Usuba here for you. Uh, apparently free, no price tag on it. So that's great. So that's a that's such a steal for a Shigafusa. Normally they're really expensive. Yeah, normally they're really yeah, that, expensive. Yeah, that was that was our buddy DJ Sergiotto in Eastern Europe that wanted to see that Shigafusa. Perfect. One thousand five hundred and sixty bucks. There we go. And it comes in a nice curie wood. One box more time too. for Mr. Sergiotto. So there you go, buddy. Ah. Uh. Okay. okay. Back to these tuna cures. Yeah. For whatever reason, I've got these tuna cures yeah. in front of me. That's for I've Marcus got... Beck. Perfect, Marcus. Uh, I'm here we go. Nikiri. Can I see the Anuru Nakiri and the Fujiwara Maburoshi Nakiri? All right. Well, you can see which one's the Fujiwara. It's this one here. It's got the finger notch. This is the Anru. Um, This one's white carbon steel clad with stainless. This one's Algami, Algami Super clad with stainless. But here's the thing. Fujiwara's white carbon steel knives feel like blue steel. His blue steel knives, like the Denka, feel like magic. feel like cutting with magic. So I know sometimes people get caught up and say, well, white steel is white steel and blue steel is blue steel. Um, there's also craftsmanship involved. And Fujiwara-san just has different techniques to get a lot more out of his steels. So this is his Nakiri, with white carbon steel for 417. And this is the Anrasan Agami Super with stainless for 275. Now I'm going to get these back into the proper boxes. There we go. <laughs> so that's always a good thing to do. And I've got these two. These yeah. two. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's Biden again. That's um, Kokoro. So this is the this this is actually one of my winners of the garage sale for me. Just because I like it doesn't mean you will. But man, I love this knife. I love how thin it is. This is like almost doesn't exist. I love the rough Nishiji and uh, Nishiji and uh, Chime finish. And I love that it's Damascus. There's nothing about this knife I don't love. It's a rosewood and uh, water buffalo horn handle. This is $387. <laughs> if there's any of these left after the first day, so at the end of Monday, I'm allowed to buy something for myself. If this is left, I'm buying it. Also, that uh, Hinura River Jump, 135 if it's left, I'm buying that one too. Oh, uh, I want it so badly. And here is the HAP 40 from, uh, from again, Hatsu Kokoro. Hatsu Kokoro. Who I, Naoto knows these guys. I don't know who these guys are. Naoto, maybe you can tell us something about them. It's a brand. <laughs> it's a brand out of the, uh, out of the uh, Kansai area. They, uh, they kind of talk to different blacksmiths and knife makers and make that blade. There we go. This one says Seki, and that's not in Kansai. Yep. I said brand is. I know the brand is. Yep. <laughs> so there we go. I believe this one's from Sanjo. The Petty. Those are cool. I, uh, I like both of those. Oh, more of these. Look at these guys. Look at them. So we have got a lot of specialty handle knives for uh, yeah. Kato San. I, I believe that's for Vian Katesh. Uh, so, who wants to see any 180 or 210 Bunka? Well, here's a 180 and 210 Bunka here. And uh, look at this handle. I'm going to call this handle, I'm going to call it a root beer. Look at the color of it. I think it looks like a root beer. I really like that. It's acrylic. It's like a really crazy bowling ball. And again, it's got that feel. It's got that feel. It feels like the Masakagi Zeros. That yeah. handle, right? Oh, yeah. Like it's got this little hook here. It's got the swell in the middle. And they just, it feels... It feels, but well, it's going to be silly to say this, but it's a handle that feels like it's made to be held. I have a, a zero. Oh my goodness! Do you know what we have got? We've got a we've hey. got a celebrity in the house. Yuji Ohara has just shown up. Yuji Ohara, that used to work with us, 
who is uh, probably the biggest guitar god in town. <laughs> Did you bring a guitar, Yuji? Air guitar. Oh, air guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. I wish if we had a guitar, I would say we're gonna have to plug in right now. There he is. Oh, yes. there he is. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Good. Doing great. You're looking awesome. dapper, bud. Awesome. Wow. Look at this one. Here, check this one out. Here, go tell the nice people on the TV about this one. Wow, this is a beautiful handle. I think uh, how to. Chato. Nice job. Well done. I love the dish. His Damascus is a fantastic. And uh, what 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 is the dish handle? It's made? acrylic and birch. Wow. Oh, it's under this is a bird. So it's a wood and acrylic uh, hybrid. Wow. That's a cool handle, right? Cool handle with a bunker shape. I'm a Kiritsuke. This is awesome. Very comfortable. For yours, for you, only 760 bucks. Wow. Do you want two or three? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Yuji. Good to see you, bud. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> yeah, so I brought my Facebook out. Oh, bottle. I want to try the soap. I haven't even seen it. Yeah. Uh, I... Bring some soap over here. We'll do an ad for it. Sure. <laughs> uh, Nato, is, do you know what T. Shiro is? T. Shiro? It's our buddy Blank Blank. I'll just clarify. Hey, Blank Blank. He's English, man. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a banana. I'm gonna no, no, I'm eat an apple. I'm gonna grab more things here. All right, okay. So, in stuff. my hand here, algami and stainless clad oh, for 179 yeah. bucks. This is the Muneishi algami and stainless. And I'm not showing. I'm in the big. I'm in the big. Oh picture. yeah, sorry about that. Well, let's switch, Change switch me there, buddy. These are all so our our buddy knives. our buddy blank blank is asking about budget knives. He says that weren't shown the other day, but I don't know what we showed the other day. Uh, so. this one I showed the other day. I'm going to show it again. I think this is I think it's a smoking deal, man. Ooh. 179 for Agami Super Cloud with stainless hand hammered. That's Munishi. That is a that is a that is a killer price. This guy, I know exactly this guy. I'm a fan. I like how the steel here is on an angle. I like the feel of the blade. So this is uh the Nishiji. AS and stainless, Algami Super and stainless. So, what's the name on this guy? Because we've had him at two Sinehisa? different names. Sunehisa, okay. So, there you go. That's uh, what's in Hisa for 172. What else do we have for budget here? So, I'm just going to show you all these things BG10, Chimmy. Damascus with a rosewood and black paca. 176. Sometimes you'll see that knife with a western handle. And uh, here we go. Back to this guy. I'm a fan. I can't believe this knife. It feels so good. It's VG10. It's 215 bucks for a 210. And uh, can, we, can we get the Damascus to flash in there? A little bit. You can even try bringing it closer to the camera if you want. I mean, we turn that matter. light on, but just push that light down instead of forward. Yeah. Can we uh, tilt it down? Maybe you have to unscrew yeah. it yeah, yeah. to tilt it down. It's, uh, it looks like it's roughly right. Yep. Yeah. So there we go. Look at that guy. And again, I still can't remember the name. What is the name on this one again, Alto? Shizu. Shizu. From Seki. Shizu. Yeah, yeah. From Shizu Hanalo. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know all of the knife makers we're working with right now because we've met a lot of them just recently, and I haven't been to Japan. And uh, so Naoto and I seem to have different uh, contacts lately. Uh, Viankatesh is also wanting to see 210 Kiritsukes. Okay, we'll get there. Um, I see Chris D says they've noticed some of his Masakagi are out of stock. Can we expect more in the future? Obviously, we've been carrying Masakagi knives for 12 years now. We were probably their first customer outside Japan, and we will have more. Always, 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 always. However, as always, handmade stuff takes time. So we're doing our best, and uh, the blacksmiths are doing their best as well. Um, Bianchitesh, is this for you? So we got the SG2. Here we go. SG2, and... 
the name on this one again is this is oh I know these oh, guys. Zuin. I met them. I, I Zuin, that's right. I actually met these guys in Frankfurt, Germany ah. at at, at uh, Ambiente. Oh, thank you for about Frankfurt. Mm. So there we go. Zuin, and it's this handle is so unusual. Can you see the shape of it? Yeah, it's looks flat, good. and then it goes one, two, three. So it's a seven-sided handle. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to describe what that is. Heptagonal. Heptagonal. There we go. SG2. And then we've got this new line, the Homura Gurin from Sakai Takuki. Uh, forged, oops, forged by Doisan. And this is a new knife and a new shape. And I think it's cool. I like the rocker on it. I like how thin it gets to the front. I like the texture. I even like the half burnt, half not burnt white oak handle. So this is Doi San, the Homura Gurin, 479. Uh, it, it and Yuji Ihara, you have to come in here and talk to us briefly about your soap. You yeah. got you got 30 seconds. Well, I go. Well, I go over here and eat a banana. Yeah. I know everybody likes the knife, but uh, in the kitchen after cutting, you get the dirty hand. Everybody needs soap. So uh, we starting cutting at the Kent of the Inglewood. This is uh, our beautiful handmade uh, the wine bo wine bo body bar soap. This is all natural ingredients and no har harsh chemical in there. It's all natural, essential oil and uh, all natural. It's a very nice and uh, feels nice leather. And, and uh, it's made with captured CO2, right? Yes, that's the saturation thing. And this is a hot paper charcoal. And what's is, activated yeah. charcoal is really good for cleaning your skin, right? Absolutely. More so than just regular soap, like it pulls out dirt and all that kind Absolutely. of nasty stuff. Yes. Excess oil, from what I understand. Yes. I use charcoal soap on my face, and it's really nice. Of course you can. Yes, I know. We, uh, but this is a kind of limited edition, very nice. We made it for the uh, us day soap, so it's nice. Yes. And, and it's, this it's made, is a, it made in Calgary, right? Yes, made in Calgary. Nice. Yeah. It's all handmade, and right now. The better were in a can of Inglewood and uh, yeah. the Calgary store. So. Awesome. And this is a uh, nice and oh God. We have a uh, seven kind is available now. So right on. Please go to that. Yeah, th those will be kind of Inglewood, Calgary, probably next week, I imagine. No, it, or do we have some I, now? Yeah, I oh, brought them today. So fantastic. So you can swing by there on the weekend, and they'll be they'll be open waiting yeah, for you. Please try and please uh, review us. Yeah, I think it, this is great. So. And uh, and if people wanted to see you play guitar, what band would they check out? <laughs> well, right now, it's, uh, well, my my band is a Boogie Patrol, is a and out about the bass band. But right now, it's you know, yeah, it's a so they can they can buy your CD, probably look <laughs> you up on that's Spotify. How, that's that's absolutely help us, and uh, go to the all, all kind of like I everything pretty much. Yeah, right on. Yeah, and then you can go see one of the shows when when those start back up again. Yes. Right on. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for having us. And uh, so, same time again. Hey, tell us about that knife, Yuji. You're what? good. I'm keeping you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a must be Kurosaki. This is one of my favorite blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. I have his knife. It's absolutely fantastic. He's just great, you know. And I love this texture. And I believe this. Uh, What's uh, this? Uh, hey, uh, uh, our buddy Damon Spector is wondering, Yuji. Yes. Uh, can you use that soap if you're left handed? <laughs> of course you can. All right. Good. <laughs> They're looking for left handed hygiene products, so I think that'll do. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, left handed. <laughs> you could just uh, wash everywhere with a uh, bust. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, this is great for him. You pull a second. Nato, yeah. you, uh, you want to fill in here? I will switch to the now sound. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Give Yuji a hand. Thanks so much. Uh, Yuji Sign used to work at Knife Work Calgary for yes. a number of years. Yes. A lot of years. Yes. And so, I, I still like. 
knife I use every day. This is an absolutely treat to use a good knife. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for the intervention there, Yuji. Awesome. Thanks, Yuji. Thank you. What are, so, what are we looking for? Okay, well, uh, CB just said, is it by request? I saw two lefty dubbas up on the site for garage sale last Monday. I've got my eye on one of them. Thanks for digging them up. No problem. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, beat in. And there's what? another one. Oh, I have to show you. Yeah. The, uh, this left-handed Yanagiba. Where's the camera? Here. Left-handed Yanagiba, made by the uh, Kitawaka-san. Um, he had a little bit of issue with the uh, sharpening, so I did refurbish work on them. So it's nice. The Kiriha or the Shinogi is crisp and done pretty okay job on this one. One of a kind. There are section on our garage sale. It's under, it's called the uh, Scratch and then Refurbish Retired Demo section there. Yeah. Where, where, where is that section? Because I'm actually not You can seeing. probably just type retired. I mean, retired, okay. Maybe you can see that. Yeah, it's called Retired Demo. Yeah. And uh, those of you that watch um, Nauto's Nerdy Power Hour on Fridays, uh, that is... Um, uh, Nauto refurbished a knife uh, for us last Friday, and so he's redone all those knives. Yeah, so these are available anywhere from a, up to 50% off. So, some of them are a pretty good deal. Uh, someone was asking for a, a Doi Petty, I believe. Um, yeah, that was uh, B Din. Yeah, we got the uh, this Guren series Petty. It's a Kiritsuke Petty, with, it's got that really nice uh, Kiritsuke tip to it. What I love about this uh, particular knife, though, is that Every batch he makes, he is making that the edge, the knife thinner, 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 thinner. Our first batch of uh, Homura with the uh, little sand sandblasted finish one, it was great. It was, but it was a little bit meaty. Um, we had a conversation. I even had a little bit of conversation with the Sakai Takayuki, and um, I was like, "It's great knife, but it could it could be actually a little bit thinner." So they they've been making that knife thinner and thinner. Thinner that is, it cuts much better. But at the same time, though, they, like, as you can see on this particular knife, they do not expose the car core steel as much as some other knife makers do, which it makes this knife a, a such a workhorse. It's really the great balance in between the thinness and a little bit more durability. Now, uh, John May actually ha was asking about that one. Yeah. Uh, let me just find the comment here. Uh, that's the Homura that, Gurren. That's the Gurren, right? Again. By Doi san. Yeah. Can somebody measure the blade length from heel to tip? Doi san seems to measure from handle to tip sometimes, so I'd be curious. This particular one should be the uh, from the heel to tip. I will double check on that one here. This 150 mil pedi is actually. 140. So, yes, he actually, this one measures it from the this uh, hidden, we call it the machi, to the tip. Yeah. And that's, so the, I saw a comment Very from sick, John right? earlier. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, it, that's just the way they measure knives in certain in certain parts of Japan, right? In certain knife makers. Certain knife makers and so, certain the, uh, knives. Even, say, for example, um, generally speaking, that knives with machi, Machi, if you look at the some of the uh, knives, the Echizen knives, they have thin enough tang that goes into the handle. They don't have to do anything to it. Where some of the uh, places like uh, Sakai, what they do is that this tang part, like where it meets right here, is as thick as the handle. It's just a style. So they actually have to make this part a little thinner. So this, the gap or the little dents, it's, going, it's called machi. Um, it's just really a style. But for example, this here, often Yanagiba and the uh, Usuba has the machi. So this here, I'm sure this box says, I don't know. 
That's wrong. I thought he he measured. But generally speaking, when there, if there is a machi, um, if there is little machi right here, they measure from the machi to the tip. So this one's 240 mil, and this is about 240. Oh, by the way, Japanese don't usually, especially when they're making kitchen knives, they don't usually use millimeters. They use the uh, this metric system called sun. Can you show the Gurren Petty real quick? Yeah. Uh, B Den was also asking about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So, Gurren Petty. Where should I stop? Here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Blue number two, favorite steel of this his family. He has this family, third generation right now, I believe, has been making kitchen knives for a little while. And the, uh, ever since they moved to the, the little uh, workshop under a uh, Sakai Tapayuki, they've been, you know, close to, like, they've been working very closely together. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a, um, someone asking about R2 Santokus. Yeah, well, how about we talk? I, I gotta do this, this in order to just keep things tidy. So, how about we do that stainless clad Hanasuki first? I only have a few. That's for beta winner. With the uh, so stainless steel clad Hanasukis, we this at, at this garage sale, we only have one with this fancy handles, but we do have, actually have a few. We have this Koishi, and we have another Koishi. We even have Masakagi Yuki white carbon number two with a stainless clad with the fancy handle as well. So for those of you who's looking for some like fancy custom handles like these guys, there is a category called custom handles. Mm. Or you can just type custom handles in our search engine or search window right there, and you'll be able to see all the custom handles, including ones like these, as well as, you know, as you saw those like fancy bowling ball handles. Okay. Oh, by the way, actually, there's one more about the oh Hatsugokoro. Hatsukokoro. Um, I think in Japanese it's better to say Hatsugokoro. It just actually becomes a sound rather than the ko. Um, anyways, this Hatsukokoro Hat 40 Hat 40 is a semi uh, stainless steel. If you leave it wet. It can rust if uh, if you just use it regularly. What happens is that the, it will patina. It will start to actually darken. It becomes the um, grayish color, which is fine. But the uh, this one here, half forty with the uh, the Honosuke right here, two eighty five, great price. It is a bit thinner than the. Uh, conventional, I guess the uh, Honosuke. So you may not want to actually put your whole like big birds just so you know next yeah so next um john may is asking, asking that you kurosaki 240 millimeter with a custom handle mm -hmm. do you just have that one or is the brown and blue handle on the website also in the sale 240 kurosaki we yeah have quite a few, there we have a lot so um, when it comes to the custom handle, like Katos and Kurosaki's, we have, we have a lot white. of different ones. White. Yeah, we have a ton. I'll just, uh, let's see. I don't want to move that camera, but. Uh, how about that camera? I was just going to say, the we can move camera. that guy. Yeah. Top camera. Real quick. And we'll just, we'll just show you how many of the custom handle ones. It won't be amazing definition, but we have this whole table's worth. Like half of that is custom handle. We can pick up Kurosaki the camera and Kato's. Right? No? Yeah, the, the quality probably won't. It'll right. probably drop the resolution, but let's see. Just, just to show people how many we have, I yeah. think that's great. We'll show you guys just how many there are. So it's probably pretty blurry, but... You can see, like, the, the size. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of custom handles. Yeah. Next. Next. Okay, so now we're on to those uh, R2 Santokus. Yes. Uh, that was uh, Bianca Tesh looking at that one. We have lots of R2 Santokus at this garage sale. A lot of them from the uh, Kurosaki-san, a lot of them from uh, 
um, two Kurosaki brothers, like, you know, Yu Kurosaki, Makoto Kurosaki. Uh, we have Kato, we have Kobayashi. So uh, if you're looking for some, I'll show you three, okay? But because there are so many. I'll show you three and explain what they are and what these differences are and stuff like that. But the, uh, if you want to search, there is a little search bar on our website to the left and you can tick Santoku, you can tick R2 or SG2 and you can get the selection narrow, okay? Yeah. Okay, so first one, Yoshimi Kato, SG2, Black Damascus. It looks almost like a Chevron Damascus. It's really nice looking with the red paka with the, the uh, Honduras um, rosewood handle here. Really nice and thin. It gets it, like, this is one of the thinner knives, like thinnest knives that we we've had by the handmade blade. Next is Shizuku. Yukurasaki Shizuku. The um, this one here because this bevel bevel is slightly really thin as well, uh, but the. What makes this really unique is that this the texture. Shizuku means water drop. So this one here is really nice. Another one, one of our favorite, the uh, very less known, I guess, uh, in the uh, knife making world, um, Kei Kobayashi. Uh, there is actually another chef, famous, uh, famous chef called Kei Kobayashi as well. Um, very subtle Damascus. This one is actually Damascus. And it's got the... Um, Stain the R2 and the stainless Damascus on the outside. Beautiful Morado handle with the white paca. This is also really nice and thin. And not only just thin, it's got a really very nice taper to it. it when you're cutting, say, into the uh, root veggies, potato carrots, yams, any of these ones actually are thin enough that you you feel like like you feel like it's you're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Okay, on to the next one there. What do you what do you have there, Nato? I got the uh, Andrew Gutos, I guess. Okay. Oh, we did have before that. So we just had a question yeah. uh, from our buddy Sean Buckle. Are there any natural stones from Imanishi for this? Project? Hoping to. Hoping. Oh, nice. I'm hoping to. The um, I'm hoping to. I'm <laughs> hoping to. I'm hoping to. Where, where's the camera? Yeah. I'm hoping to. <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, some some smaller um. We're hoping to get them by the end of the garage sale. Uh, we're uh, looking at the small Copa Ozukus, which is great for razor sharpening. Uh, we are looking at the little bit more smaller uh, ish Atago, um, so as the Ohira. Um, I've asked the uh, Imanish san to uh, get a little bit of softer collection of the um, at, um, Ohiras, so hopefully it's pretty good. Probably in total about the seven or seven, not right around ten. Uh, we're probably gonna get them when, if they're gonna get them. So just keep knives out. Um, once it is here, we'll uh, it'll be on the website. Um, you may have to ask for the uh, you know camp pictures and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this was for somebody uh, beta winner yep. saying, could you show us? The Anru Guto. We have two. The uh, we're hoping to have a little bit more, but we have one Shirogami uh, with the uh, carbon uh, Damascus on the outside. Kurochi the black finish. Pretty standard uh, white carbon steel is uh, one of the favorite steel for, for the uh, with the knife makers blacksmith. Um, great edge retention. Uh, it rusts though if you don't if you're not careful. We have this um, Aogami. Number two, a uh, stainless clad uh, Tsuchime, the, the hammered pattern finish on this one here. It's the, it's a, it makes it really easy to take care of because it's stainless steel on the outside. We have, we have very limited run this time. So the uh, 240, uh, this one is 240, another one was 210. Okay. Cool. All right, Imda. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Maybe do you do you have any announcements now? So do you have any news? Yes, yes. Hi, 
I'm, I'm like white up, white enough. Um, we have a um, couple news. The um, my, I guess, like you know, what am I? What I'm going to do is that the uh, in on June third we'll have That's a. Awesome. I know. Masashi Yamamoto-san, who is the, the knife maker, I know, sure who, overpower it with warm light. who is the guy yeah. behind... We also tried turning off the overhead, said it might actually look good. Where is that the, Where did that okay. thing go? I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I can just do this. Masashi Yamamoto-san, who is the knife maker, 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 who I'm going to interview him, live interview him with, on this YouTube channel, June 6th from 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So if you want... It's, yeah. it's really bright. Yeah. I like it. No. So Mountain Time, check it out. We will have, the, uh, we'll have that about an hour, hour and a half uh, conversation with the uh, Masashi Yamamoto-san about... About knives, what he thinks about it, and you know, all that stuff. So hopefully, you guys will all tune up, tune in on yeah. that one. Uh, other news? Well, when does the garage sale start? Right. We haven't yeah. said that for a while. <laughs> garage sale. So the things that we have been showing, garage sale will start on Monday the 17th, is it? Yeah. Yep. 17th, um, Monday, 8 a.m., Mountain time for those of you live in the uh, the uh, West Coast or the um, Toronto, oh, New York, those places. Two hours already, so 10 a.m. Uh, just do your math; it's pretty easy. Uh, so 8 a.m. Mountain time. We'll start that. This um, we we'll open it up, and also we'll do all the live events like this. I don't know why I'm wearing that Sakai Takayuki thing. It looks good. No, I don't like know. I, I ripped the uh, my. Thing off. I was actually working on. I was finishing up all the refurbished knives. So um, here, ten years knife here. This is better. So, the stay tuned. The uh, we'll uh, we'll have this set up and the uh, you know answer whatever questions you may have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Okay, we got some more questions about knives. Sam B is wondering, will there be any Kamagatas coming in? Unfortunately, not. The um, Kamagata is very unique shape to this Masakagi's. So we uh, we don't have usually any other shapes on um, Kamagatas other than the Masakagi's. Sometimes we do have them without a handles and put the special handle on, but unfortunately we don't. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me find another question here. Uh, Sean Buckle just says, uh, you guys are awesome for doing all this extra work, though. Thank Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. we appreciate it. Get paid any extra. Sorry, we were a bit late, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's it's lots of fun. We always look forward to all these garage sale live streams. Here's a here's a good question. Oh, this okay. might uh, Naoto might be too diplomatic to answer this, but Albert is asking uh, Seki Sakai or Sanjo who would win in a fight, uh, like a knife making fight or like an actual fight. Sanjo, everybody in Sanjo is stronger than anybody else. Sanjo's like strong, fight. but the Sakai has the numbers and because Seki, they Seki has, huge Seki numbers. has numbers. Because yeah, if you look at it, the uh, Sakai or well, Sanjo, they are mostly they 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 do everything by themselves. So Masashi San pretty much does. I know, but they're way stronger. Yeah. I put, well, I you put have to like I put Miyazaki, Miyazaki or yeah, Mizaki and uh, mm. Masashi against anybody. They, they're they're strong. Yeah, I'll put them against anybody for fighting. Right, and a little bit younger. There are younger blacksmiths in the Sakai region, but the uh, most of these are a little bit older generation. So, um, blank blank says those scratch and dent knives are just my speed. You know, they're a great budget friendly option. Do you want to show off the knives that you refurbished real quick, Nato? Sure. Because sure. we got some great blades that uh, were once sample knives in our stores and might have got dinged up. And uh, Nato did an amazing job of restoring them, making them beautiful again. Nathan, don't tell lies. <laughs> Nathan and I did the work. So, <laughs> Nato, Nato so, smoked some cigarettes <laughs> and told us to be better. I refurbish knives as well as I time races, Kevin. I like how you time races. <laughs> so, so I'm a pro. I'm a knife refurbishing pro. All right. Just bring that up. It's okay. Huh. It's just not so focusing. trouble focusing. Yeah, I'll focus on. There we go. 
Pedro. There you go. Portrait. Masakage. Oh, here you go. Masakage Kiri. Um, this was returned um, and used, and it's got the little chip on them. I we did decided to do a refurbished work on this particular one. Uh, I polished it up and used this special powder. <laughs> We're actually going to actually testing on. So this special powder to bring this beautiful Damascus finish back on this. We're going to test the powder up and hopefully we'll have them uh, for sale maybe in a month or two. Yeah, it did incredible work. The, um, believe this is half price. I think they all are. No. Up to 50% off. Yeah, they vary. They're, they're anywhere from like what, 30? 35 to 50. Yeah. All right. So here. Um, Mugen, it used to be Nakiri. Also, it's got a huge chip on them. So worked on and made it like a bunka. Nice finish. AS half price. Another one that I uh, that I was super proud of. Kitaoka san's a uh, Yanagiba left handed. It was it's got a little bit of issue when it's uh when it's out, so I refurbished it, uh, sharpened, um, polished, uh, edge clean up, and now. Oh, so this is 50% off as well. The Man, that's a really good deal for that. The <laughs> it's a nice knife. It's 138, yes. Wow. So 138 for Kiri, 228 for Mugen, 230 for... Uh, so check it out. Go to the... There's a refurbished uh, retire, retired demo knife. There's the variance drop-down menu. You click on it. You just, you know, you see all the selections. And you see the discount rate on that as well. Uh, Spanish Iwa just wanted to clarify um, what uh, what was the previous knife for 138? That was a Masakage Kiri, what, Kyuto? It's got pictures on that the product as well, so check those out. Yeah. Okay, so there's some not so well known blacksmith that the uh, that we like to um, introduce, I guess, the um, here. Well, you know Doi-san, it's not. But this grand line has three shapes. You saw um, Gyuto and uh, Gyuto and Petty. This Nakiri is very interesting. It's got the a little bit slower heel to it. So when you're cutting this way, you don't have to raise the knife up as much. A little minimal motion, you will create that enough space for the food to be set, and you can cut it. Almost the... Um, drops motion like this way instead of rocking away. This is pretty interesting. Uh, Algami, again, number two, uh, carbon core, the is flat, 399. Th two blocks is that we will actually like to um, introduce to the uh, people. The uh, We had this, uh, this knife before. Miyazaki-san. From the uh, I Goto Island in the uh, in Nagasaki Prefecture, um, Haruki Miyazaki, Haruki, yeah, Haruki, Miyazaki, yeah, Haruki Miyazaki-san. He is the relatively young blacksmith, 30, 35 years old in age. He was born and raised in this like remote uh, island uh, with beautiful nature around him, and he wanted to become a blacksmith. There used to be a, a blacksmith shop and I in that island and um he remember kind of seeing him like as he grew up but the he retired so he wanted to become a blacksmith on that island so he was looking for someone to apprentice under uh he ended up a at the um this blacksmith shop in the fukuoka uh, called obasan obasan wasn't like yeah i'm not gonna take any apprentice and he the miyazaki-san convinced him to take him he was so enthusiastic about the what he does so, um, hmm? oh, don't stomp. Yeah, no, exactly. That don't do it. Okay. So he um, he basically convinced that the old Obasan um, and uh, became an apprentice. I think worked for eighty six or eighty years or something to 
Then he went back to went back home in the island of Goto and became, uh, started his own workshop. Um, his um, master or the sensei, he only uses the so-called, uh, he called the kina or the kigami, which is the yellow carbon steel. It's easy to sharpen. Uh, you know, it's super rugged. He's the uh, kind of guy who makes the uh, kitchen knife for uh, regular home use, like, you know, like, People, right, but this uh, Miyazaki-san took it to the kind of next level, uh, trying actually trying a lot of different steels. Now this one here is the um, made out of a, um, I believe it's a blue number one core, no blue number two core with the uh, roll iron, like roll iron that's used in that uh, the railroads and that uh, the uh, anchors and stuff like that. He gets it, he melts it, and he folds in a few times. So if you actually look at this very closely, you can see that the very naturally occurred layer Damascus on this blade. That's pro that's one of the reasons why this particular blade is 670. It's got a lot of work to actually do the folding and stuff. Here, we've got his Tsubaki, another same looking knife, but it's a lot more affordable at 336. This one here is blue number two with the stainless clad on the outside makes it really easy to take care of. For those who wants to feel what he does, this is fantastic knife for that. Hey Naoto, yeah. what's that thing you always say during our videos? Hmm? You know that, that thing that you say in every video? Oh yeah, like it, subscribe, hit the bell mark so that you don't miss any live videos or any uploaded videos. Thanks buddy. Yeah. All right, uh, ready to blast some more questions? You got, oh, you got a little Just more to show do off. One more. Yeah, that's a nice one. So here is the, uh, uh, this is under uh, Hinokuni Sakai, Hinokuni Sakai-san. This is brand new blacksmith who started his own workshop in this January, I think in the spring. He is also a young blacksmith out of Kumamoto Prefecture. So. The uh, Miyazaki-san from Nagasaki, Kumamoto. Those area surprisingly have a lot of like blacksmith shops and workshops, and the culture of blacksmithing is still very, very strong. He apprenticed under this a uh, knife maker called Nishida-san. Nishida-san is also very, um, very good blacksmith. He's the kind of guy who doesn't like to use any rikizai or clad steel. He's like, ah, no, nah, I'm just going to make on. It's like Moritaka-san. He they always have forged welds of steel. So he, the Sakai-san, learned that from Nishida-san. So all his knives are forged welded in-house. And the way in which if you, it's really hard to see in the camera, but you can see the very fine small scratches though, which is the evidence of the uh, finish by hand. Oh. You can actually see the, yeah, like very tiny. So it's been sharpened like this. So relatively young blacksmith, he just started his own workshop. Uh, Nishida-san, okay, they, I've seen and cut with Nishida-san's knife before. Um, we, we trust Nishida-san's. Um, it's got really nice thin um, work to it. So because of that, we'll, and what was his name again? Sakai. Just Sakai-san? Sakai-san, yeah. Just Sakai? Yeah. Uh, Fred Bishara Jr. has an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Does Makoto-san forge the blades himself? The description on the site makes it seem like he just takes them and styles them. The uh, uh, Makoto-san is a sharpener. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so he yeah. <laughs> he has a, there's a blacksmith that does the forging work, and he yeah. makes them, he, shapes them. And... He often gets the blades from, say, like Kato-san. He gets... Uh, blades from sometimes sometimes you see that the uh, collaboration work with the uh his brother yukurosaki right but when it happens though they say they, they usually say they're pretty transparent yeah this like yeah. collaboration work <clears throat> um don penny's asking any thoughts on the steak knives yes we have oh my thoughts are get them don penny <laughs> don penny they're perfect for the brisket that you do i don't know if you know this don penny is bad mouthing chris lord all the time yeah he, he's he's his biggest uh, detractor. Even this, bigger than you. I'm nice to Chris Lord. <laughs> Siki Kanetsugu. There's the, those names are very... Not to be confused with Seki Kanetsune. Yeah. The reason why those names are very similar is that they, they 
those names are old blacksmith name, like swordsmith name, mm. say, and it's like kind of somehow related. But it's hard to see in the picture. This is Corliss Damascus. Corliss basically means it's just basically two pieces of steel uh, layers them together. VG10 and VG2. Very nice and thin. Comes in the uh, four different color. Was well, 660 for a set of four. Yeah, that's a gorgeous set. I love how each handle is a different color, too. Yeah. Well, that's oh. the cool part, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Hayden Harry uh, is asking, any Maguro Bocho? Oh, yeah. Can we even show this one off in the little cam? We might need the big camera for this one. <laughs> this well, don't is... use it on Maguro. This is the Maguro Bocho size knife for sure. Here, I'll switch cameras real quick just so you can show them the full size of the knife. This one is listed as Yukurusaki Senko Sakimaru Sujihiki. Yeah, that thing is beautiful. We may have some magu like Maguro Bocho in some, actually, the uh, Vancouver store. In the store. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a proper Maguro, like single bevel Maguro Bocho. But this thing this is... This one's even better because it's double bevel. This thing and... takes the kick. I would get this one. Look at the handle on that. Can you hold the handle up to the camera? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's the one that I pulled out on the Nerd Hour last week. Mm -hmm. uh, last Friday, I went, Nato, what's this? Is it a secret? <laughs> Can I show it on yeah, camera? It's a secret. It's a secret. It I ruined the secret. Yeah. Uh, can we please see the Yoshikazu Tanaka knives? Yeah, I have them actually out somewhere here. So we have uh, some few Tanaka sans knives here. Why do we want to know Tanaka san? Give us, a, give us a history on Tanaka san. Or something. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Just say yes, Kevin. Yeah, yes, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. So, Yoshikazu Tanaka san is the second, third generation blacksmith out of the uh, Sakai. He's probably. Um, I've seen a lot of different knife makers. Because um, if you go to Sakai, you see the uh, blazer made by this knife maker and sharpened by this knife maker. And if you actually visit them, you get to actually see the uh, this blank of the forged blades that's made by different blacksmiths. And I was actually doing a comparison between this blacksmith A, B, Tanaka-san. And I found that Tanaka-san's blades are probably one of the, well, it was the best among the three I was looking at. The reason, he is one of the very few guys who actually forges the knife into this tapered shape by forging it, not by sharpening it. You know what that means. Mm. So now, oftentimes, see, what the blacksmith does is that they forge into the knife looking shape but the spine of it it is like pretty much the same thickness from all the way from the, the tang to the um, the tip where tanaka-san does such great job on making a taper so it's very natural taper it's actually made by forging so we have two we represent like tanaka -san, we have two different three different lines, two different companies of Tanaka-san's knife. One is this beautiful um, Shiroichi, white carbon number one with stainless clad. It was very unusual. It's, you start to see more and more these days, but it's very unusual to see carbon steel clad stainless knives. This Osakai, now they changed to the uh, name Hado, will have the uh, new uh, branding uh Probably in May or well, June, prob June, July, um, they've um, they've the, they've asked the Tanaka-san because Tanaka-san was like always the carbon steel guy, and when they start talking about um, you know stainless clad, they were like, nah. Tanaka-san was like, no, it's the stainless, and they convinced them, no, 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 it's actually carbon in the core. Anyways, so this is one of the first batches that the Tanaka-san started making, and now he actually sells to the other people as well, which is and sharpened by Mariyama-san. Mariyama-san, uh, despite the um, the very short-ish uh, history, he's got really nice uh, hands on them. Same story, the uh, Tana Yoshikazu Tanaka-san forged 
Sakai Kikumori brand, this is all Sogasumi or the Okasumi finish. Uh, this will glide through things very nice. It's got the uh, um, it's got white number two steel and sandblasted to make it really nice, uh, cool looking. Sharpened by the um, Ajioka san. He Nathan just dropped his phone. Hopefully, it's not broken. No, this is my phone charger. That oh, fine. good. <laughs> Ajioka san, I, I liked him because the uh, I his way of the uh, Profiling it, um, how he makes the taper, it's great. And also, he is great um, so that he, he what, what you call it, he goes to schools to teach the uh, teach kids what he does. Also, Yoshikazu Tanaka-san's the Sumi line, all Sumi. Um, we we asked them to leave the black on so that the forging work is very um, clear. You can actually see how he forges into this taper shape. And also, we asked them to polish the spine and the uh, the uh, choil. There is very, for those of you who wants this, yeah. Alrighty, so that's Tanaka-san's knife. So Yoshikazu Tanaka-san, I've seen you know some other blacksmith. I'm not gonna name them, but the uh, for when it comes to double bevel knives, he's probably one of the best in the best I've seen in that uh, in that region. That's uh, that's quite the claim. Because um, <clears throat> I yeah. Pause and rewind is asking any natural stones. Okay, so natural stones are in, on its way. Hopefully, it's gonna be here uh, by the end of this garage sale. And we'll have some Ozuku Kopa. We will have some Ohira, uh, forty type. So it's got you know it's kind of squarish type with a little bit of uh, cut. Uh, also, we're gonna get the some Atago. Uh, I think it's a type 40. This is just a size. Um, types coming. A few coming. So just keep my eyes out. We'll we'll uh, we'll have them on the website as soon as it arrives. Right on. Um, Beat in is asking, can I see Shizu Hamono Petty, yeah. please? She's uh, I can't reach. Uh, uh, I'm not tall enough. Man. <laughs> Sorry, bud. This guy here. Yeah. She's a Hamono Petty. Again, VG10 stainless steel. It's great little knife. It's got a nice polish, be nice, beautiful grind. He, they, it's kind of hard to see here. They actually use a metal where the, the handle meets. So it's almost like it's probably almost impossible to take this off. You see that the little metal right here? Oh, yeah, the little pin there. No, wait. Oh. In the, in the here. Oh, crazy. Yeah. And what they do is that they use a little pin to secure. They fill that. Um, so what they do is they put this handle in, and they make a tiny hole right here, and they put the glue, and they put the different colored wood. Like there's a little dot here. And cut it and polish it. This is very traditional technique that the uh, sword makers are using. So, and Seki is, you know, that's where, so, like, there are a lot of sword makers uh, living there back then. So they wanted to follow that tradition. So pretty good. All paka wood. So uh, it's pretty indestructible handle here. Right on. Only downside, only I guess downside is that the, uh, <laughs> that's the handle is uh, D shape. Oh, you don't like D-shaped handles? I, I love it. Oh, okay. I love them. I like it. For, for those who's, you know. Yeah. So some lefties like that more than righties, though. Yeah. They yeah. have to feel them, right? Yeah, exactly. This is some of the uh, lines that we are testing out, and we're probably going to have them, you know, regularly, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Sean Buckle's asking, uh, how about uh, Hinokuno Sakai Santoku? Yeah, that was the one that I was showing. Oh, okay. Hinokuni-san. Yeah, well, the Sakai. Hinokuni Sakai-san Toku. Pretty nice and thin. It's very uniquely shaped. Um, you know, up and coming. We want to support them, right? Mm -hmm. It's all carbon steel. So, just... I have to double check. These guys need, uh, need to put the price on. Yeah. Uh, can... What can you tell me about the Nigara SG2 knives? Yeah. Oh, we don't have them. 
No? Well, we should. There, there are a lot of chicken around. Well, I, I can find some. Yeah, it's on the bottom right. Okay, there. sounds good. Great. Do you want to go over the uh, garage sale details real quick? Yeah, while, so, uh, so the garage sale uh, starts on the May 17th till the uh, 24th of May for a week or eight days. Starts on 8, eight, oh, sorry, starts on 8 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we'll start at the broadcast or the uh, this live stream uh, as soon as it hits eight or slightly early so that we can show you the all details and you know for those of you who's looking to get something one of a kind um go at it at 8 a.m there are very a lot of knives that are one of a kind this time so um you can ask your questions later purchase it then ask questions right yeah like, you know, you can just put in a cart and parse it and ask questions. Hey, how about this, this, and that? And if you want to combine the orders, let us know. We can we can accommodate you that. Well, if I'm not mistaken, if somebody else has it in their cart, you can still buy it and vice versa. So if you just add a bunch of stuff to your cart, yeah. that's not going to reserve it. So if there's a knife you want, buy it first thing and then go back and buy whatever else yeah. you want. Pay for it. We can we can refund you shipping if we have to ship a few knives together. Yeah. We can combine orders, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But uh, but if you don't jump on the knife you want, you might not get it. Yeah. Now, Mike H is, yeah, was asking, can you tell me about the Nigara yeah. SG2 knives? Nigara SG2, Nigara san is relatively newish blacksmith or knife maker, but the co the company history has actually very long, like about a couple hundred years. The uh, the ancestor they started making uh, swords. This uh, generation, the youngest generation, the uh, Tsuyoshi uh, Nigara san. Oh, sorry, Yoshi Tsuyoshi san, Yoshi Yoshizawa san. Nigara is actually the blacksmith name, right? Ah, now, okay. Right? But the uh, Yoshizawa san, he um, he's like thirty five, like oh, actually my age. He started making kitchen knives. The um, very recently and they adapted a lot of techniques from the uh very thin taper or sharpening from a um what you call that the um etches and like masakagis and stuff like that or kurosaki so they've adapted a lot of like very s similar technique of having very similar texture on the blade and really nice thin taper or to a uh, high speed powder steel is really really nice. Not only that we don't carry them, but he is the uh, he's very uh, good and wants to be become better at him. So there are a lot of like knives that's being hand folded, hand forged. Uh, we are we have those guys as well as we will have some AS um, stainless clad lines um, in the future as well. I'm pretty excited to see. I have more, more coming. I have this idea that the uh, this generation of young blacksmith, like Miyazaki-san, like Manaka-san, uh, we did have Manaka knives ordered, but the we're probably gonna get them by the uh, small makers man. Manaka-san, Miyazaki-san, um, Yoshizawa-san. Those are in the same generation. They are up and coming generation as uh, like. It's millen millennia, millennium. It's like my generation. Like I'm 30, I'm born 83. And Manaka-san is the same age as me. Those people who started being becoming blacksmith, being a blacksmith when they are uh, early 20s. Now their skills been matured. Like Ikeda-san as well. Their skills been matured that the, they are the up and coming force of this Japanese kitchen knife uh, blacksmith in the industry. And I'll actually like to have the uh, interview with the, all three or four, like at the same time, so that they get to actually talk to each other. Yeah, that'd be really good. Do like a round table kind of yeah, discussion. Round table discussion. That'd be discussion. awesome. I would like to do that online. Yeah. Anyways, that's a little, little bit of an <clears throat> off topic, but that's something that I would like to. Th this question was a while ago. So yeah. sorry, it only took me uh, uh, 45 minutes to get to it, but. Uh, Peter Brown was asking that Kurosaki that Yuji was holding, which one was that? Oh, here, I'll switch your cameras here. Kurosaki Senko, 240 millimeters. This one here is a variant 
of a uh, it's not the variant of concern it's a, <laughs> it is a so if you choose a kurosaki senko 240 gyuto there is a drop down menu that you can choose a type of handle uh, i see that yeah so <laughs> this one is a honduran rosewood wow. with the uh, with the uh, turquoise inlay the uh, you know it's a artificial turquoise inlay yeah we have another one like these that's the uh, Drop down menu you can choose as this one. It's a maple burl. Mm, nice. And there's another one that's the spouted maple with the super blue blue. Cool. You can get to, you get to see the um, picture when you um when you are actually at the web on our website. Um Brad Jenkins is asking, how does the SG2 in the U Kurosaki Senko uh, stack up to the Algami Super in my Makoto Kurosaki Ryusei? Mm. Let's grab the Ryusei and uh, R2 Kurosaki? Yeah. Makoto or the uh, Senko? Uh, Senko, yeah. Uh, Senko, yeah. You Kurosaki. Senko, Senko, Senko. So he's, he's wondering, yeah, how the steels compare. Yeah. So steel here, the different type of steel, right? The um, edge retention is Pretty, very similar. Like I probably one will keep the edge tiny bit longer than others, but the hardness and stuff like that are pretty much the same. Pretty much. Um, you know, one is all stainless steel, the R2 is all stainless steel. Um, the um Algami Super is the uh, you know, the carbon steel with stainless clad. I enjoy sharpening a um Carbon steel, it takes a little bit more smoother edge my, from my perspective. It's great. But the um, if you compare these two side by side, this problem the Senko cuts slightly smoother as one, the uh, it's thinner, it glides into food a little bit nicer, probably. The uh, and also a bit thinner just behind the edge as well. This one here is a little bit more slightly more meat left on it so it's got the both like super sharp edge as well as the little bit more i will call it the uh, little bit more a um, durability behind the edge make sense yeah um colin says Hey guys, would love to see the Bunka selection if you haven't already done so. Bunka. If, you, Bunka. if you want to start showing some off, I'll grab you some other ones to yeah. show off. Yeah. So we have a something like Yukur Sakitan. Loves the Bunka shape. This new, his new Ho -O, or Phoenix line VG10 color Damascus or Rainbow Damascus. It's got a brass and nickel in it and it's got a really beautiful look to it. The set, the Raijin, the god of thunder. I think it's an art. Isn't that the Mortal Kombat character? Is that, Is that Raijin? Kombat? There's a Fujin and Raijin everywhere. Yeah. It might have been actually Cobalt Special. The, uh, I think it's a Cobalt Special. It's got really nice shine to it. It's very thin. This here is the 338. Saji makes the beautiful ironwood with Algami number two in the core, Rainbow Damascus. Mm -hmm. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Some like Kevin calls it the uh, bowling ball handle. <laughs> This is almost like the, he calls it Gyuto. So this is a uh, Kiritsuke Gyuto, 180 millimeters. It's got a Kiritsuke tip to it. Or to Senko with fancy looking handle. Okay. All right. And we have some wah handle. Regular traditional Japanese, well, the Masakage Koishi, Awagami Super, 
with stainless clad with the the handle like this. Mm -hmm. Then I've got the uh, this Seki Kanetsune. No wait, Seki Kanetsugu R2 or SPG2. Those two are the same steel. Have to go and handle. Very nice and thin. Okay, what's what's next? What's next? Uh, let's see. Talk about uh, Dave Inspector is asking, are there any Kitalka uh, single bevels that aren't on the site yet? That should be it. We'll have to double check. Again, the uh, the refurbished one is the one that I was we were showing, right? The RC that I saw the other day, well, not the other day. Uh, there are some uh, VG10 Damascus. Um, but I can't, I can't remember where I put it. It's like all buried down there. It's buried all of it. In, in the meantime, while you're thinking about that, uh, we okay. have a question. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Okay, so Damon, here's the Kitalka. So it's a, this is like some rare piece, like VG10 Damascus. Rosewood handle, Yanagiba, 270 millimeters. For seven sixteen. Okay. okay. Um, Chris D, wanted you to compare those two custom handle Koichi bunkas. Okay. Just compare, show, show off the two handles maybe together. So Chris D, this is for you. Thanks for waiting. Yeah, maybe just bring them up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, hold, hold them still, and then I can uh, focus it. This is better. Yeah. yeah, that's better. One is like, you know, it's got a blue, orange-ish color goes on. The other one is beige, um, light brown with some green goes on. Yeah, yeah. Bo both really beautiful. I kind of... I like the the one on your right hand. I yeah, like the, I like this too. It reminds me of like going to a really fancy bank downtown as a kid, and they had like marble floors. Like it's got a very kind of yeah. natural marble look to it. I like this one. Yeah. Um. So if you go on a website, a uh, fancy handle again, drop down menu. Yeah. There is one or two. Number yeah. one or two. It's not number. Well, it's not like rank. Right. But we wanted to, you know, have just, them so that the we, options. So the uh, this. This one here is a number two. The other one is number one. So again, there's a drop down menu. So you can just drop down. Uh, the the photo should correspond to what uh, what those handles are. So. Yeah. Um, Pause and rewind is asking any more pocket knives besides uh, besides those ones. No, unfortunately, the um, we, we are we, though we are getting more into pocket knives in our sister brand called Kent of Inglewood. The, um, this James? James brand. James brand pocket knives are available right now. Yeah, it's a company out of Portland, uh, Oregon. And they design some pretty beautiful stuff. They, they do some cool stuff. There. I, that's my new one. I just got it. What, was that last weekend I got it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it's, it's like solid too. If you want to check out our uh, Kindle Wingo website, we are uh, actually um, expanding our collection of the pocket knives and hunting knives, or the camping knives and stuff. We, yeah. The uh, Seki Kanetsune, where you saw some of the, the butcher knives, like this is called Atama Otoshi. Or Atama, the it's actually taking the head off of the uh, pork. Huh. Yeah, it's it's that's what it's designed for. This one here is the Kawahagi. It's the skinning knife. It looks like symmetry, so you can use it as like that. But this company has lots of outdoorsy knives as well, and all of most of these are went into the um, Kentabingwood. Kentabingwood.com. And uh, we got we got handmade axes and yeah, lots of pocket knives, hunting knives, camping and bushcrafting knives. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. What do we got here? Uh, 
keep the questions coming, folks. If you have uh, if you have any other questions, yeah. Um, if you if there isn't, uh, we can talk something yeah. about new. So the uh, oh here here we go. Yeah. Th this is perfect. Albert Anderson is asking, what are some knives that haven't been asked about that you think deserve more attention? <laughs> We've got, I mean, we've got a ton of great stuff. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the full setup here on camera, but this is definitely our biggest garage sale selection yet. You'll notice this table over here is actually layered too deep in a lot of spots. Um, <laughs> we just didn't have enough space to put everything. We even ordered a new eight-foot table, and it, we just filled it in like five minutes with all the fancy knives. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of great stuff this time around. So now is going to grab some of his favorites to show off for you. If you have questions, keep them coming. We're uh, we don't have a we don't have an end time in mind, so uh, you know we got to go home at some point. But but keep it coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just going to show you something that you know we had mentioned. Jarasan, he is the uh, good, great blacksmith. Um, he's like kind of blacksmith that he just basically tells us, say, just tell us what you want. <laughs> he can make some. It's it's a block. It's not the very traditional blacksmith mind, right? So yeah. this sobakiri is made <laughs> super giant. It's like it's very big. Uh, it's noodle cutting knife, but the um, it's got really nice weight to it. When you actually cut in soba, you not only want the sharpness, but you want the weight so that you don't lift up as much, but you just let it. Sit on that the soba. Um, this particular piece is fourteen ninety nine. kurosaki san is known for his double bevels and lots of different uh, hammer patterns and like Shizuku, Senko, and all such. This here. Very nicely mirror polished Yukusaki Yanagiba single bevel Yanagiba sharpened by a sharpener in Sakai. It's got really beautiful. What the handle is this? Is snake wood? Oh, yeah, the water I love snake wood. both sides. That's such a gorgeous material. Yeah, there we go. For those of you who like to follow us and see the fancy knives. Doesn't get much fancier than this. So this is the beast. Uh, real quick, we just had a question from Christopher Martin saying, when will all the items go live? I think they should all be live, right? They are available. They yeah. should be all available on our website. Uh, Knifer.com slash garage dash sale. Yeah. Um, Christopher, if there's something specific that you're not seeing on the site, um, let us know. Like, ju just let us know in the comments or... Uh, or send me an uh, uh, an email, Nathan at knifewear.com, and I'll uh, I'll investigate it on my end. If you're waiting for photos, I think we're still waiting to put some up. I'll double check with our web manager. Kagero-san, he is semi-retired. Oh, like he's retired, but he has still he holds this blacksmithing as a hobby. <laughs> so he makes some blades, and whenever he makes something super cool, we we basically you know introduce to the uh, customers. This beautiful recycled steel Damascus on the outside, blue carbon steel in the core, Mr. Kage Kujira. It's actually like a, almost like a Deba thick beast. <laughs> it's going to be a, like Yo Deba. You can cut the bones with it. It's really thick. It's nice. Really? Yeah, it's really thick. Oh my God. Yeah. I'd be hesitant to do that with a Kagura, but that is uh, that's super cool. Like, say. Oh, the calipers are coming out, guys. Nato's getting nerdy. This like five point. Five and a quarter, 5.25 millimeter thick oh. on the spine. Getting nerdy Tapers in here. down to 2.3 millimeter. Oh, so, this is really good. You don't like. You don't know. He said. He says he's retired, but he has this as a, a hobby. Um, so we may get some more. We may not. So that's something that we can't predict. One more thing that I want to actually uh, show. Re real quick, Don. Don Penny was saying I haven't seen those big swords online. Uh, Don, were you talking about the Kurosaki ones? If so, yeah. they are live. I just checked. They're under Shizuku we, Sakimaru. We have to adjust the, adjust the inventory. And 
I'm, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. It is. It does say sold out at the moment. I know. We're gonna do that. Yeah. Here, but here. but they will. If they're not in inventory yet, they will be by Monday. Yeah, they will be. Yeah. Um. Okay. So something that we were not really good at um, showcasing or introducing or talking about Hoyaki knives. Honyaki is a piece of knife, well, the knife that's made out of just one piece of steel. As I've been talking, the knives are clad. Knives have that softer steel on the outside. This Honyaki knife is made with one piece of steel with using the technique called the differential heat treatment. What that means is that they use very thick clay on the spine so the spine is softer but the uh, edge is hard. Um, this one, it's really hard to see, I think, in the, the camera, but it's got a very beautiful mirror with the Mount Fuji Kamon, or here, 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 yeah, on him, mirror polish, but Mount Fuji. Um, yeah, that's crazy. With quince pearl, with quince pearl saya, Forced by the uh, this um, Nakagawa san, Nakagawa of the Nakagawa Hamono. He is the uh, he's probably the best um, knife maker in his generation right now. He is the uh, he is the the pro he learned all the skills from this uh, knife maker, uh, Kenichi Shiraki uh, of Shiraki Hamono. He um, he's retired, Shiraki san's retired. Now Nakagawa-san took over, and Nakagawa-san has his name on his company, Nakagawa Hamono. But the uh, he's very talented. He does. Uh, he's capable of forging a blaze like this one. It made with white number one carbon steel. We wanted to make this a top of the uh, representation of the uh, what best um, Sakai can bring. So. It's got the mirror polish. It's got a sharpened by. It's got a forged by the uh, Shiraki san. Oh, no, sorry, the Nakagawa san. And it's the. Um, it's polished by very famed uh, sharpener, which we're told that not don't don't mention, <laughs> unfortunately. But the uh, polished very nicely, mirror polished with the uh, quince burrow handle with the quince saya, um, very nice and thin. But it's very practical as well because it's not all mirror polished. Like, the edge here is, it's easy to sharpen this way, okay? So that's the, um, that's something that we wanted to kind of talk about because you, you don't get to, Yeah. I, I don't get to talk about it that much. Yeah. We've got a question from our buddy James Wang. Good to see you, James. Happy Friday. Uh, by the way, Naoto, I just saw there's a Kiyoshi Kato Tsujihiki on the garage sale page. Is it actually available? <gasps> is it? Oh my god. Change the camera. Uh, Change the is camera. Is this the one we were talking Change about? Change the camera. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, I don't know if I can focus that close. Yeah, oh, there we go. You see that the name? Woo. Here. Here. Okay. Here. It's got a Hujari Shaki on him. Dang. This bad boy on. Mm. Yeah. So, no word. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> yes, James, it is for real. Unlike those other knives we disappointed you with. Uh, can you show the Anru Agami 2 stainless? Uh, Tsuchi Meg Yuto 240. There's no image on the website. Oh. Oh, weird. We are failing. Sorry. Yeah, Joaquin, uh, we should have that up soon, but I'll, I'll check. Oh, oh. Froze. <gasps> Here we go. Yeah, what you here? Here? Can you... Yeah. There, there you go. go. It's, it's got, got a beautiful, beautiful Tsuchi Meg hammer, hammer pattern on them. It's, it's not black, black. It's nicely polished. 240 millimeters. If you want to wait for the, uh, you know, this, just ask. <laughs> yeah. 
it's really nice feel though. This actually balances um, like right there where I, I actually like to pinch. This balances like really well. Look. Oh this, yeah. Like, this balances so well. Damn. Okay. Uh <laughs> there were some compliments about how professional you are on camera and how much people like you as a host. And ellipsis says Nato doesn't drink or curse enough on stream to, for me to think he's the best. <laughs> so I guess we need to I need we need to get you drunk and uh, have a <laughs> uh, there, there are beer in, in the fridge. Yeah, well I, I think it's it's four thirty. I feel like we can crack a beer. I'll, I'll go grab some in a sec. Um, while you're doing that, mighty. I, I need, need some drink though. That's for sure. I'm getting very thirsty. Okay. Well, I'll grab you some water and a beer. Yeah. Uh, mighty Michu is asking any Kurosaki petties or SG two petties. Yeah, the, there are actually the Senko um, has some petties. Also the uh, the this the this this here. Um, I'm sure Kevin talked about it earlier. So Senko, very traditional regular handle with the, the uh, white paka, rosewood with white paka. It's here. 241, it's beautiful petty, like 130, 130 millimeters. We have same Senko Tsuchime or the, the hammer pattern, but different. So this will be named under a Yukurosaki R2 or SG2 Senko R2? SG2 Senko Western Petty, Western Handle. And there's a drop down menu, you click on it, you see that the colors. Pink, we have, we have actually five different colors. Pink, blue, uh, some. Oh, I think I hit some of those over here. Bowling balls and things Bowling like that. Bowling ball's not a color. <laughs> Yeah, they're really nice. So something like these ones are available. Um, Yukusaki. We have Shizuku. We have had the Shizuku Petty somewhere as well. Sometimes it's like, like as you can see, it's like pretty deep. Thanks for the water. No problem. But our website, is, we make it the uh, easy to maneuver around. So if you actually go on the website and the, you know see all the, uh, there is, if you're on a laptop or in computer base, on the left hand side there is a uh, little search um, criteria uh, thing that you can uh, you can do. So you can see the uh, you know you can choose the blacksmith, you can choose the uh, you know type of steel, petty uh, size, shape, that kind of stuff. Oh, sorry, sorry about the echo a few minutes ago, guys. Um, that was uh we accidentally turned on a second viewer, so we fixed that. Okay. Uh blank blank says you, you need to say fuck at least once so they can trust you. Oh my god. Don't say a bad word, Noto. Don't say a bad word, Noto. Don't do it. Blank blank. Fuck I need my beer today. Here you go. <laughs> Are you drinking beer? I'm Thanks, Noto. Look at this one. When did this one come in? I didn't even know. I want that. Yeah, let's That's what Naoto said as soon as we opened it. He said, uh, yeah, Kevin's going to want this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Kevin showed this one already. Oh, yeah. One. yeah. No. That's the root beer. Yeah. Or is, it, is there a really green one? That's a green there was, root beer. There's a very blue one somewhere. He saw well. a very green one. He said he wanted it, and I told him what it was. And then he was like, Something. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I like Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Damon Spector's requesting uh, a chapter of the new book to be Lordy's Laughs, all <laughs> Switzerland jokes. Uh, we were actually just going to do a whole book. One whole book of uh, Lordy and Switzerland. Facts and fiction. Oh, we should have Something, something that I, we have not talked about is, so, we want to try to make it as all kitchenized, but sometimes there are a lot of blacksmiths that we you know we won't represent like we want to show the uh, work of the uh, blacksmith and uh, how how well they do michio tasai san from the uh, sanjo he is the very famed well-known plain chisel knife maker chisel maker we got the kiridashi temoku kiridashi nathan you want to actually Oh yeah. The oh man, this one is nice. 
Tenmoku Kiridashi. Kiridashi is this all-purpose, you know, craft knife that, you know, you have them to make small cutting papers and stuff. Nothing, like, out of ordinary. It's just, like, multi-purpose knife. But this Damascus look is done by hand by this blacksmith. He, I've seen, actually, his work on that, the uh, television um, TV shows and stuff. He doesn't he makes the chisel, the chisels and uh, plain blades without any measurements. He just like hammers it out and it's always the same. It's like precision. Those blacksmiths who makes those tools, especially think about it, plain blades. What plain blade does? What plain blade does? It pushes. Make, make things flat. Oh. <laughs> right? It planes. You, it planes. Making the surface super flat. You have to make blade flat. And he's great. He's a great guy. Hmm. So we have this uh, Tenmoku Kiridashi. Like this. As well as the uh, this Watetsu. Watetsu in the Japanese, well, the, in, in, in English, it's Japanese steel. So Watetsu is all <coughs> those old steels from a, um, like, um, old nails and st stuff like that. He collects it, melts it, and folds it over over. It makes it really beautiful patterns like this, as well as much easier to sharpen. That's what he says. So the Temoku, this one here is 682, and this Watetsu is uh, uh, 526. Anyways. Ellipsy says, I want that Kiridashi because it would look so awesome on my rack, but that's quite a purchase for something I yes. probably only use to score bread or buns. Yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I think that's a great <laughs> knife for scoring bread. Yeah, make fresh sourdough every morning, right? Um, okay, let's uh, let's get some more. This is great, like representation of the uh, what is it? OT. Oh yeah, overtime brewing. That's the one that's just north of here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good local craft beer. Uh, Dave Inspector is asking, what natural stone should I pick up to finish my Iwasaki? We're getting into the nerd hour. Iwasaki. Um, we are getting, I think four or five. I can't remember exact numbers. But we're getting four or five Ozuku Koppa. Koppa is this smaller piece of, um, it's a, there's like, you know, size, big size, small size. The smallest one is called the laser or Koppa. Uh, we're going to get into Koppa. Um, get those for Iwasaki. Here, cheers now, though. Cheers. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy almost five o'clock. Yeah. So that's, that's what I would get. And keep an eye out for a, um, um, What's coming for a uh, grass sale? Because we are receiving some. I know we are receiving some. Cool. Uh, John May saying there is what looks like a Tsuchihiki with a lighter handle and a gray collar on the scratch and dent section. What's that? Is that the oh, Yanagiba? Oh, the Mizu, yeah. yeah Mizu. Uh, half price, 50% uh, off, 200, regular 240. Uh, it's 120 uh, Tsuchihiki. I probably rolled as 270 mil. I didn't even measure. Oh, wait, I have to change description. This is actually 300 mil. <laughs> so 300 mil, uh, Mizu Tsujihiki. It's basically, it. I refurbished it by um, putting a little bit wider bevel at the tip and a little bit stronger edge on the heel. Um, other than that, I'm, I didn't do it much. It just makes it made it look pretty and cuts good. So yeah, scratch and dent sections are truly one of a kind. Yeah. So um, they're Naoto originals, Naoto Fujimoto originals. So yeah, just just keep the uh, keep them. Um, Fred Bashar is asking, will the Ho O be a normal line carried by knifeware in the future, or are they very rare? As in Kurosaki only makes them when he feels like it. It's the we probably like a Shizuku or a Senko. We will somehow carries them. Mm -hmm. We will feature probably in the grass now. Is that true for a lot of his knives? He kind of yeah. makes them when he feels like it. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll have them older. We will, but the um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll... whole knives are great. Um, and compared to uh, the same steel uh, knife made by. Saji, it's actually really re reasonably priced compared to yeah. computer Saji's. Cool. 
Let's see if I can get this one out in one in one go. Can we see the Sakai Kikumori Shiroichi Honyaki Fujiyama Hamon Yanagiba 300 millimeter? Yes. That's from David Alexander on YouTube. Yes. Oh, Dave. Switcheroo. So I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. This is Sakai Woo! Kikumori Shiroichi White Number One Carbon Steel Honyaki forged by Nakagawa san. From of the Nakagawa Hamono at the time, it was actually Shiraki Hamono. Nakagawa Hamono just started very recently. Mizu Honyaki, water quenched Honyaki with white carbon number one. Mirror polish on a Hira that the, the this this uh, flat part with the Mount Fuji Hamon on them. But make it a little bit more practical. The the Kiriha. The, this bevel part is actually not mirror polished. So, you know, you sharpen them anyways, right? So, and it comes so with nice. the uh, the quince burl handle with quince burl saya or the sheath. It just really, this is an, again, one of the knives that we wanted to bring a best of Sakai. Mm. Best of Sakai. The, uh, it's, it's just, that was my. It's the guy's uh, finest. Our thoughts behind that. We wanted to, you know, we can get some Honyakis a little bit more reasonably priced. But we wanted to basically bring you guys a lot best of the what the Sakai can offer. Yeah. Um, blank Blank said, sorry, guys, my boss came over. I had to pause it. <laughs> I thought you were self-employed. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's talking about his cat. Um. Daniel Ambrosic uh, is just asking, any bunkas? We have Woo! a lot of bunkas. Boy, do we have some bunkas. We have a lot of bunkas. We are we did it. bustling with bunkas. Yeah. We, did, we just did a, a roundup of bunkas, but what, what else do we have? Oh, should we, we should probably get some else. Yeah, let's get some new ones in here. The, um, if you look at this one, too. Yeah, we this... have those custom handle ones that are pretty nice. Miyazaki sounds a... Um, um, it's called Hakata Bunka. Yeah. Oh, this is good. I'm just going to do these. All right. All right. So, first of all, let's start from a uh, really, well, all of these are around mid 300s. You, Kurosaki, you know, many people like, I think this is Kobo Special. I think I may have to change the sticker. Kobo Special Raijin, the God of Thunder Bunka for 338, or, uh, but it's still stainless steel. Seki Kanetsugu R2 S or SG2, 344. Beautiful Damascus on the outside, but it's got the nice, uh, very thin taper. Their uh, sharpening job is actually pretty good for the uh, machine made knives. Haruki Miyazaki-san, Hakata, blue number two with stainless clad. Um, again, relatively young blacksmith. Algami number two with stainless. It's got a very distinct look, Hakata look to it. He is actually now making lots of different sizes and shapes. This was the only shape that he was making. And we're hoping to have actually his different shapes and finishes soon. Still listed as all Sakai, O U L Sakai, Sh Yoshikazu Tanaka san and Mariyama san sharp. Yoshikazu Tanaka san forged, Mariyama san sharpen, the Sumi. I almost say this is the kind of collaboration work with us and the uh, all Sakai. The, uh, the, we suggested they have the Kurochi finish, but not only that, to polish the spine and the choil really nice. I have 240 from this line. It is Fantastic! It's my, like, it's my go-to. I, I have like, I have how many knives? Like probably 20, 30 knives, <laughs> at least. And yeah. sometimes like new knives become my a favorite and everyday use. Sometimes I buy new knives, use them, and becomes like, yeah, I'm probably gonna use them occasion knife. This Sakaio became my go-to, which is you know not happening all the time. <laughs> not every day. Uh, blank blank. I actually had a good question uh, that I guess we didn't cover. Uh, I'm surprised this is still going. Are you guys going <laughs> to do the normal Friday stream after this? Unfortunately, not. 
we're gonna just answer all the questions. <laughs> we're gonna keep answering questions. If you guys do have more Nautos Mirror Hour kind of questions uh, about sharpening and stuff, I think we cover garage sale stuff pretty thoroughly. We've been on for two and a half hours now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's still a bunch of folks watching, so we're not we're not in a rush to get off. If you do have sharpening questions, let us know. Uh, yeah. But we have the uh, again. The, if you want to look at the some of the refurbished knives, these are available right now under a retired demo. Uh, there is a drop down menu you click on and you choose that the uh, name knife. You see the picture. I just took them the other, like today, like a couple hours ago, and those will be available as well. Uh, up to 50% off, anywhere from 35 to 50% off. Yeah. And then it's like, sad thing is that the more work I did, there are 50% off. And yeah. then they, you know, those ones are the ones that are more effort to fix. And but. it's, yeah, it's just like been sitting, like, you know. Yeah. While right, so those um, ones are I, I had a question from Spoon Monkey. It wasn't in the comments here. It was it was actually on our, our Discord that we just started up. Uh, we're still getting oh. going, but uh, oh. yeah, we, it's it's not official, so don't oh. don't tell Kevin. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we we've just been having some sharpening discussion there. Yeah, yeah. If you wanna if you wanna join, just uh, head over to just look up Knifeware on Discord or uh, shoot me an email, Nathan at knifeware.com if There's you can't someone find. I saw asking for something that's a uh, sometimes that's um. You know, relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Um, so we can probably talk about it. Um, well, it, just real quick, uh, Spoon Monkey had a question on on the Discord saying, um, "Has anyone here ever thinned a Miyabi Birchwood? Uh, I have six to thin soon, and they want to get get the finish back as best as possible." So Miyabi Birchwood, the um, so those finishes, there are, in order to bring those a uh, Damascus finish back, knife makers usually do, well, three different methods. Three different methods. One is the uh, acid etching, right? So acid melts, or the ferric acid melts the uh, steel slide different rate. And the Damascus layers usually have that hard steel and softer steel. So it melts in slight different rate that pops up the uh, Damascus finish. Number two is use the proper stone, like a uh, Hinorosan does. Mm. Hinorosan finds that the uh, proper uh, natural stones that does the uh, does that job. Number three, and what's probably most common, is to use a sandblast. You know, they have the blast box, and they put the hand, and there's the nozzle with the sand and they just shh, mm. do that. Okay. What Do you know what stones might be good for? Because that's what, SG2? In the Miyabi Birchwood? Yeah, Miyabi do, Birchwood. Do, do you know what stone might be good for bringing the polish back on those? No. Number, no, I don't. And also it's hard because the stones, you have to touch on the same. That's why I wanted to bring this up. I don't know, like, for those of you who, oh, oh, um, what you call it, the Fu... Uh, follows my Instagram uh, may have seen this here. Masakage Kiri. This knife was actually all sanded down, and there you didn't you couldn't see any of those Damascus finish. Yeah, I saw the this picture, and I thought it was a different knife because it it just I had no pattern. And this company Suhiro started selling this secret powder and it's designed to bring this finish back cool so we got the we got only a few to try out but the we are seriously considering getting those in for sale in a couple of months yeah so keep I'm an excited. eye out it's gonna be I don't know what's called right now I think it's called it's called say here polishing powder yeah, but those ones are great to bring this like finish back, and they have this is like a medium grit, like six hundred grit. They have medium and a fine, and fine will probably do very well for the Miyabi because it's got a little bit more polish. Right. Finish. So keep the eye out for those ner ner knife nerds or sharpening nerds. No kidding, okay. that's it's exciting yeah. stuff. I'm excited actually. Um, AJ is asking, will you have those special Moritaka Hanasukis at the sale? Not this time. Not this time, unfortunately. We've been talking. Moritaka-san 
usually have this a um, year-long um, schedule, production schedule. And when we ask at the uh, last garage, like at the end of the last garage sale, they've already had all the schedule filled for the production until the next garage sale, which is in November. So they don't just produce like, because they, they only had a six month to fulfill, right? After mm -hmm. the, the last garage sale, it was November. We're like, hey can you and they were like no our six month is already full how about we slide you into here so next one that's yeah for sure so no well. november november like. for sure because i've i've talked to them <laughs> so sorry for those of you who's uh who's um who's waiting on those ones these guys are coming in november right so yeah uh, blank blank has a varied question. It says, "Where is Usyk? Is it even a live stream if he isn't here?" Yeah, where? Oh, right. Where is Usyk? Um, a good uh, sword question from Albert. When I see uh, katana in museums, the hamon is usually really close to the edge, midway down the bevel. Mm -hmm. But the kitchen knife hanyaki see, all seem to have the hamon right up at the start of the bevel. Why? Absolutely. The reason, if you look at old old hanyaki knives from kitchen knives. Those hamons are much actually lower. And those hamons have become uh, actually raised over. It becomes like closer to the spine in, in the last 20 years. Why? Because people, people are starting to actually think that, you know, they want to use it as, as much as they can. Right. They want as more they life sharpen spent. Them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It lasts longer. But truly, though, like in a true hamon, and in order for the, if you think about the real effect of the, uh, um, like the differential heat treatment, I think the hormone should be a little bit lower. Mm, gotcha. I think. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, blank Blank says, I guess I'll ask, ask a knife question. Nato, what under $200 knife do you recommend? Under $200, the, uh, this one. I should get to you. I this was the pricing, but I know it's under two hundred. I also uh, I really like. It's not like a multi-purpose knife, but I really like those guys. Oh yeah, the Sekikanetsune. <laughs> Sekikanetsune SKD twelve um, boning knife series is great. It comes with actually nice um, sheath, but this here. Mune Ishi sends a uh, blue number two carbon steel stainless clad. There were, I believe, about $170, $170, $180. It's really nicely made. The sharpening job is good. It's fairly well made knife for very great price. Easy to take care of. Nice wood cherry handle without, and we you know, no plastic right here. So it's actually pretty good. We have Nakiri. We have Sentoku. As well as the uh, 120 Petty. All these are under $200. Um, another one. This here... Seki Kanetsugu makes very, very good knives. The uh, I was showing the uh, this this Bunka R2. What I like about this knife line is that the uh, how they sharpen, how thin, how thin behind the edge they sharpen. And R2 knives, yeah, it's great, but they have this line. Pro M series. It looks very simple, you know. It's very un unimpressive looking knife. This here, Pro M steel here is actually it's called the uh, AS six. It's actually pretty soft, durable, flexible. Little bit. It doesn't have little bit. It has a tiny bit of give and thin. This like uh, becomes it will become your workhorse. And I think it's like hundreds something dollars. And it's, I have to double check on those prices because uh, 
they need the uh, stickers. But Seki Kanetsugu Prime series is great. Oh, probably, oh, it's not, I can't remember the price. The best probably value Gyuto under 200. Ah, just over. You know what? Let's just add this. This is probably the best value. 209. Takamura. Chromax. Chromax is this type of uh, um, the uh, semi stainless steel. It's actually SKD 12 or VS1. Oh. But he calls it Chromax. But if you actually go to the uh, Takif Special Steel site, uh, they have this uh, explanation saying VS1, also known as Chromax. Interesting. Beautiful Tsuchime, 210. Um, he only makes a limited run. We had him like before, but. Two two o nine on this particular knife, but it's great. The, the edge, that how thin he makes, everything about this knife is great. All you have to be a little bit careful about is that Chromax or the, the this SKD twelve. You have to be um, you don't you can't um, you can't leave it wet. Yeah, you can you can patina and it can it can it could rust. So uh, this you, is great. Usyk said he was held up by. A serious plumbing issue and bye bye knife money for a while. I'm really sorry to hear that, you like that. That sucks. Uh, anybody that's had a plumbing issue in their home knows it sucks. No, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Edward Manser, here's a good question. Uh, approximately how many tinker tanks do you think you'll have for this sale and what color are the handles this year? Grasso, it's, it's just timing. I don't yeah. know. I don't... We, We'll probably have less than one ticker tank. Unfortunately, there is a, a really there's a lot of people that want ticker tanks because they're super cool knives and they're they're a very limited knife. So I think right now we have about 300 people waiting on them, and uh, it's just a matter you got to add your name to the waiting list on the site and then and then wait for them to come in and you'll you'll get the email. But there there is a priority list, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mike H is asking, can you show the Tsunehisa Algami? Kurochi Sakamaru Sujihiki. Did I did I say that one already? Yeah, no, yeah. No, I didn't. Okay, that was a different one. I know that came in. I, it's in a box. It's in a box. That's okay. <laughs> no, hey, it came in actually no box, and we actually have to find it. Oh, we had to. So <laughs> I thought you meant it's in a box right now. Okay. No, it's in the box right now, but it did come without a box. So they just chucked it in the box, eh? Yeah. No, it was like bubble wrapped. Oh dear! So the the tip was broken, so I had to fix this. <laughs> but I fixed it, so it's good. Sakimaru Sujihiki. so it's double beveled Sujihiki. made by a uh, a blacksmith in Tulsa. I'm not actually sure the uh, name of the blacksmith. It's pretty bulky. It's pretty thick on the spine, and it tapers very gradually to the uh, tip. But it's not so thin as some of the Sakai or the, sorry, the, uh, um, who is it? The, uh, the, uh, like Kurosaki knives. But it's right. got really nice meat. It's got a nice Yeah, it's a bit weight. beefy, yeah. but in a good way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in a good way. That's like, really nice. So here, and it's got, you know, nice exposure on the core steel. Very even from both sides. No much like overexposing it or anything like that. And yeah, it didn't come in the box, so we made we we put put that in the box. We made it happen. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, audacious monkey, the popular question says, "I would love to see the Takeshi Saji Rainbow Damascus. Yeah. I want to see the pink streaks." Yeah. Saji san. So, what happens is that this uh, Saji Kurosaki um, and uh, who is it? The Hinora san uses the same steel to start. You may, you could probably zoom it or make it the uh, make it focus. Because I don't yeah, think it's yeah. focused. Boom. But you know what? The uh, if you compare this to uh, Kurosaki's hole, it's slightly more expensive. 
But I can tell why, though. It's the intricate design that goes on on the blade here. Like, his, uh, Kurosaki's hole is a little bit more linear, right? It's just like this drips. Mm -hmm. He makes it so intricate that, you know, as someone mentioned, it's like some pink dots, some pink lines, and... Yeah, it's so it's so nice. When I got when we got this knife first and first looked at it, which is pretty fortunate enough that I work here here at the <laughs> warehouse. Yeah, we're lucky in that. And sense. sometimes, like I, I get to see the knife that I, you know before any store can. I was like, oh, that is nice knife. So, this okay? Can I hopefully? Could, uh, could see that. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Ambrosik is asking, will there be any knives for sale by uh, made by Anrisan, not his son-in-law? So here's the situation. It's not son-in-law. It's the it's a nephew. Or nephew, sorry. Uh, that, I messed that up because he had up. he had son and then somebody else corrected it to nephew. So that, oh, that's my bad. Okay. The uh, so the uh, Ikeda san has been a, a main blacksmith. So he was probably forging 95% of the blades um, for last three years. So even though, so I'll show you the, because um, we have, yeah, this, these knives, because we wanted to make, kind of make sure that this is what we carry. So here, we have like here, this is good. So. Wanna oh yeah. Do the uh, I don't know if you can see this engraving, and this engraving is different. This Nakiri says Katsuge, and this says Anru. And engraving changed as Ikeda-san took control of the business beginning of the uh, this year, January. So when he decided to change that, Katsuge was the Anu's senior is a uh, first name. So he decided to, let's just take Anu's name. So he decided to change the engraving to Anu rather than the Katsushige. Hmm. Right? But it does not, or it did not change any uh, procedural uh, process that they have been doing. Anu son still works for, works at the, uh, at the Anu Uchi Hamono. And um, it's basically the boss switched. Now Ikeda-san is the boss, but when the Anryu-san was boss, he Ikeda-san was doing pretty much everything. Only thing, only thing different is that now Ikeda-san has to uh, talk to a bank and stuff, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, he had them, right?" So that's that's one of the reasons why the uh, uh, I, we haven't seen the Anryu's knives for a little while. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, they, yeah, that makes nice. sense. Yeah, so. yeah he's, he's been busy doing paperwork so, and other unexciting blacksmith jobs. Yeah. Engraving changed. Nothing has changed. Like, if you're really looking for the knives that's forged by Anderson, you may have to look at like knives that's forged seven, six, seven years, five, five years or before, which yeah. is hard. Yeah, that's difficult. Um. Let's see. Uh, Toby Willis says, uh, I'm watching this with a wife. Can you please tell her to buy me a new knife as a present? Her name is Maxime. <laughs> Maxime. Yeah, buy, buy a knife for Maxime. <laughs> I'm really bad at that kind of stuff. Yeah, buy, buy him a knife. Come on, the guy yeah. deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, a lot of good selection, though. The Again, the uh, some reasonably priced knives like a... Uh, yeah. You don't need to drop seven hundred bucks on a no, no. on a kitchen knife. We have some. This some is one stuff. of the really popular knife Tsunehisa. The um, it's really good to good beginner beginner or the uh, people who's hadn't had the Japanese knives before. It's very um, what you call it the um, um, what you call it the um, familiar European style handle and very traditional Japanese blade. Will keep the edge very nice and long. It the it has a stainless steel on the outside. The core you may have to worry too a little bit about the rusting, but just keep it dry. This one is under 
a uh, it's called Tsunehisa. But if you're looking at anywhere from like hundred, this is hundred seventy two dollars. It's called Tsunehisa. It's hard to find, but you know we'll we'll, we'll we are here to help you find good stuff, right? Yeah. The, the yeah, stuff. exactly. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, TJ Ronan has a good question because this is something that gets brought up a lot. It says, uh, Hinora Sukasa, does he just send you whatever he wants or can you order a specific knife? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's Kevin. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> we, he we... is a Japanese artist. Yeah. It's, it's he's an artist. Yeah, there we go. Even, that's, even that's they know they know what that means. Yeah. Even with, when when he's we had the, when we place an order and he's like, oh, it's good timing. I haven't got a those knives. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. was three years ago. Well, the last time I was there, he said, Kevin, I've got thirty of these. You can have them all. And I went, great. Can I put them in my backpack right now? He's like, no, no, I'll send them to you. And they they were right. Yeah. Four. Oh, here you go. I got four. I'm only. I'm still down twenty six. Like really, like <laughs> there was one time I was like, "Yeah, we want those," and we were, we were like, "Oh, it's good timing. We're about to make those." And like two and a half years later, we have. Them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I. You I know what? He's an artist, man. He's an artist. Have you seen his new sharpening studio? I know. I know. He's got two thousand jazz LPs. Yep. Beautiful turntable, these old JBL speakers. Outstanding. Sounds good. Yeah. And he just goes up there and listens to jazz records and sharpens knives. Sometimes sharpens knives. Sometimes. Listens to jazz records and smokes cigarettes. Drinks coffee. Yeah. yeah. Thinks yeah. about sharpening knives. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Fighting Usyk says, tell Kevin, got the book and just started reading. It's fantastic. Ah, uh, yes. The picture's great. The words, highly suspect. <laughs> the signature... Might bring down the resale value. <laughs> well, it's hard to find one that I haven't signed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just go into chapters and start signing books. I've, I've done that. Well, it's got the uh, me and the Lordy's uh, signature on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. My it's thoughts, rare. It's collector's my thoughts, my thoughts on Makoto Kurosaki, SG2 Sakura Bunka, is this. He's a great sharpener. He's a great polisher. It's the fit and finish, beautiful, and it keeps an edge like you think it will on SG2. It's a great little knife. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, my thought, Daniel, is they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, Garnet Paul is asking, what would you recommend for a two seventy to three hundred single bevel slicer? A Yanagiba. Oh, there's this one. Oh. There. Oh. 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 Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna get out of the way then. Yeah. You know. Yes. Well, I was actually thinking of not that one. I was thinking of this one. Masashi. Sakimaru. Takobiki? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the one I was <laughs> yeah, thinking. Yeah, this is good as well. So, the, the, yeah, this one. White number two carbon steel goes to the sheath. 745. Sakai Kikumori. Sakimaru Takobiki. It's a little bit more skinnier profile. Forced by Yoshikazu Tanaka san. It's got little, slightly different, like, different styles, right? This is beautiful as well. White number two carbon steel. Eight fifty eight on this guy here. It's this one is a little bit light than the uh, this guy here. Tubby right. Willis says, "Funny you say that. Me and a friend just ordered a book. One came signed and the other not. We had to rock paper scissors for it. <laughs> which one? The non signed one? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> They're like." Oh, Wait, which one did you get, Toby? Didn't you place the order? I feel like you 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 deserve the one you want. Yeah, signed or unsigned. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, These ones are great. We have another uh, Kiritsuke from. Oh yeah. As well. In the meantime, I'm going to pop up a quick question uh, from Fred Bashara Jr. Uh, any idea when Takeda 110 Bunko would be back? They're on order, Fred. Um, they show up when they show up. We will probably have them the end of in between the end of this month to a uh, the end of July. And Fred, oh, better than I thought. As yeah. soon as it comes in order, it because yeah. those Takedas they bounce, they land and they bounce. Yeah, we don't even put them on the shelf usually. No, they just sit on the they sit on the receiving desk and they just sit there and then yeah. they 
pack them up slowly for the next two days and they're gone. Um, Fred, make sure your email is entered on the product page where it says notify me when it's back in stock and then we'll shoot you an email when it shows up. He says also is R2 the exact same as SG2? Yes. Yep. Same thing. Okay. Different name though. So one more slicer for uh, Garnet. Yeah, the, um, this one, Akira Sasaoka-san uh, Sharpen. The, um, it's just a little bit more reasonably priced, 374 Oh, it's 270 yeah. Sakimaru Takobiki, it's the same as, again, I, well, it's a function is the same. Single bevel, Kurochi. It's got a little bit more weight so that it's easier to, like, let the knife do that job kind of uh, motion. I think. <laughs> that thing. That's such a pretty knife. Oh, I want that so badly. I want oh, that I so badly. Oh. Found the green. Oh, the green's nice. That one's amazing. Nice. Oh, that's, uh, that pink one, please. Oh, that pink one now. So I want it so badly. Uh, so well, badly. What well, we haven't some some things that we haven't talked about, and uh, also you know relates to the, some the question that we had. Um, if you're looking for really good single bevel, you're gonna give it for a really good price. This is great, and it's got a really nice uh, story to it. Story. It's not history. Story to it. Sakai Kikumori Tomoshiri. Tomoshiri means a, a candlelight. A candlelight. <laughs> Tomoshiri. So this line here is made by a made by this a, a company called Myojin Diki in the, uh, in the Tosa. I don't mean Ricky, the head blacksmith or the blacksmith who forged this particular knife oh, is a guy wow. so who nice. used to work for Kevin, or we used to work for us actually. His for name's Nightfall. Toru. Don't say it though. You're not supposed to say his name. Yeah, no. Don't. <laughs> his name is Toru, so nope. don't say that name. Don't repeat it anywhere, yeah, especially repeat. not on the internet. So yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble from now to now. Well, so luckily we're doing it in a totally private forum. This is not made by somebody that used to work here. No. But I really want this knife now, Tom. Is it red? Yeah, it's yeah, red. Nice. So it's got a little bit of a story. We used to have a, we still have a bass guitar. We have a bass guitar from this unnamed person. Yeah, unnamed person. That we don't know his name, but he used to work here. Yeah, he used to work Whose for name us. does not wasn't rhyme with Wasn't he your roommate? Boru. No, 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 not a roommate. But when he, when he came to visit us with the other, because he used to work for Kato. Yeah. And when he came to visit us, yeah. Um, everyone else stayed at the B and B, and I took him to our house. Ah. So we spent, you know, like, yeah, my wife, my wife knew him as well. So we spent, you know, a night, you know, just talking it's about it. Funny, him. you can't remember his name, but you know him. I know. Right? I can't. Yeah. You don't know to talk about him. Yeah. He's the the blast, blacksmith who will not be named. Yeah. You know who? He's he's good though. He's he's uh, trained under uh, um, Kato, mm -hmm. so he's, he can forge double bevel. He's trained under Shimizu san, which means he can do single bevel. Single and bevel. Big ones. And he was working for Ryusen, which he can actually oh, I produce. Didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he was working for Ryusen. So now he knows small, like medium-ish, like the like size-wise, right? Yeah, yeah. Like. Kato was big at the time because he had a, quite a few uh, apprentices, yeah. right? So not super, super small, but medium-ish blacksmith, like size-wise. Yeah. Then he went to Shimizu-san. He was, was the only tiny. apprentice, yeah. tiny. Then he worked for the rear stand, which is super big. Now, I'm really curious about the future of that particular knife maker. So Kevin just handed over oh, this. this yeah. Masakagi Kujira 250 Gyuto. He's a very funny character. He <laughs> said he's an artist. He's retired. No, he's actually doing it as a hobby. Yes. Yes. I, I confirmed that with the uh with our you know a person who we get this so, life yeah, from. So he's he's now doing it as a hobby. Yeah. It used to be his life. Yeah, so he it was his work and he wanted to retire, so he retired and he Sometimes, like, comes in a forge and makes plays, and basically he sends that knife to a uh, the supplier. And we get it. <laughs> and we get it. They're yeah. like, 
hey, we got those knives. Some guys so, are into mall so trains. Tell, tell us who that is, why it's exciting, how much it is, and then say goodbye because I'm going home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Ken Kagura the um, It's a 1615, 1600, $1,615 here. Yeah? 1600 one ten uh, fifteen dollars here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm I'm bad at numbers. Here. But for those of you watching, it's sixteen fourteen. Fifteen. Oh, sixteen fourteen. One dollar off. Yeah. One dollar off. If you put in the code, if you put in the pro, the 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 uh the code, code uh code Nathan, Kagura. Nathan. Nathan. Put in the code Nathan, you get a dollar off. If it doesn't work, just write a note. Nathan said I get a buck off. And a free <laughs> sticker. One thing that's a really hard thing about this is that the uh, we can't really tell if it's the last batch or not. Yeah, we want we it's don't want the last batch. We don't want to say it's the last because yeah. we want to see that knife come in. But it's the last. But yeah. it can be last. It's kind of like your dad that's gonna redo the bathroom next weekend. <laughs> when you say your dad, you mean me? <laughs> sure, because that's my game. <laughs> Listen, are you guys still going? Because I'm. Uh, yeah, we still got some home. questions, but you can. Yeah. You can, is that cool? You can ride off into the sunset. Yeah. Can I ride off into the sunset? Yeah. Uh, Ciao. I'm out of here. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. We'll uh, see you back here. Same bat channel, same bat time. No, not same no, time. No, not same time. No. All day on Monday. All day on Monday. AM. All day on Monday. We will uh, we'll be caffeinated. We'll do more of this. 8 AM. Yeah. Super caffeinated. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do we'll answer the rest of the questions. If you guys have any, pop them in the comments. We're gonna get going relatively soon now, so I need to take some time off before the big Monday. <laughs> um let's let's blast through some. Yeah. Audacious Monkey, Takeshi Saji, Rainbow Damascus. Is it too late to show? Nope. Not at all, Rainbow Monkey. That's why we're here. There are two uh, lines of Rainbow Damascus. One's a a two. A2 means a uh, algami number two. It's actually not algami. It's actually called the uh, slightly different. I'm very s talking secretly. <laughs> Top secret. But it's it's a, basically um, this steel is made by the uh, Takefu special steel. Takefu special steel. Algami is very specific name for Hitachi. So uh, Takefu special really? steel. Yeah. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. Takefu special steel makes very similar. So yeah. they actually use that steel in the core uh -huh. and stainless Damascus on the outside. What do they call it? Uh, oh, that was the uh, v, um, v Toku 1 or V Toku 2. Right. But the um, Hinora-san likes to call it that name. But they make it a little bit easier for people to understand. Saji-san calls it blue number 2. This is blue number 2 core stainless Rainbow Damascus. Here, you can see the rainbow here. Okay, then this is new attempt by the uh, Takif special night special steel VG10. That's a VG10 knife, eh? Yeah, VG10 was the uh, rainbow Damascus on the other side. This oh. VG10 one, I like this VG10 rainbow Damascus over this actually the, by the look. It just got a lot more, you know, like uniqueness goes on. Mr. Garu, I have to go back and get my glasses. Thanks to the apple, it's delicious. Oh yeah, apples are fantastic. Yeah. Those are the best apples in the world. So we have a um, rainbow Damascus. Oh, with ironwood handle. Here it's no the bunka. And yeah. Okay, here's a good one from TJ Ronan. Okay. What's the most expensive knife on the sale? This garage sale. Um, this probably. Oh yeah. That's three grand. Yeah. Woo! No, probably that. We have thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Yeah. So like three oh, grand. Oh, the Plus nine hundred dollars. Oh. Well, here. Why don't we show that? Well, the Tom Hagen is great. Actually, I'm gonna actually talk about that. Yeah. Show the Tom Hagen. And show the big Magura Bocha, which is an And, and just a, a quick thank you to the, the yeah. 50 people that have stuck around and are still watching. You people rock. Uh, you should like the video and subscribe to our channel. Oh, if you like Please. the video, they'll make me do more of them. Okay. Right? 
Top three. This is great. Top three. Top three. Nah. Top three most expensive knives Top in the three garage sale. Most expensive knives. Flick bait. Number three. That's number three. Hmm. Holy shit. Yusha Yasha. I really want that one though. So if that's if that's available after my man have it. It's it, and great. That's Takayuki Yasha. Um, Yasha is the Swedish national born swordsmith living in Yamaguchi Prefecture. He forges the blade and Takayuki Shibata san, actually. Mm. Those two, because they live about like an hour and a half uh, from each other, like in distance yep. by, by drive, they came up like, hey, let's do something super cool. Right. So the Yusha san. Ayasha san, they, they're like, he's like, why don't I make a blade by using this tamahagane, which is the uh, this um, uh, sword making steel, which yeah, is super pretty expensive. Serious stuff. It's serious stuff. It's only available to those uh, certified swordsmith. <laughs> right? Doesn't it take three straight days of work? Oh, yeah. To make, like, the sleep. guy has yeah. to be awake for three days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They keep adding the, the steel sand and, and the car, um, charcoal. Um, and this here, so Tamahagane Nakiri. So this particular one's twenty eight twenty. Number two, Yukurosaki, the Sakimaru Sujihiki R two four hundred eighty millimeters. Oh, sorry, four hundred fifty millimeters. It's very very long, Sujihiki. Yeah, I can't believe that one's not the most expensive. Twenty nine, twenty six, and Honyaki definitely takes a lot more skills and time. Blank blank says you guys sound like you're either getting tired or drunk. It's a bit of both. We're very tired. It's been a long week of getting ready for the garage sale. Kevin may have been a bit late today, so I was a little stressed getting started. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're a little tired, and we're having having Sakai a drink. Sakai Kikumori. Oh, you can see the Mount Fuji now. Yeah, Mount Fuji Hamon white number Shirogami white number one white carbon number one steel mirror polish on the Hira. With this, with the uh, what you call it, the uh, quince burl saya, thirty nine oh five. Oh, real quick. Um, first of all, th those are super cool. Um, uh, a regular viewer of ours just uh, had a question. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. Um, mm -hmm. Rob Carson, I may have blasted by your question. We are fairly behind on the questions because we're, yeah. you know, we're talking and doing our thing yeah. uh, as we usually do. Uh, he was just wondering if you could see the 240 Usuba. Oh, yeah, that's Shiga. the Shigafusa, right? Yeah. yeah. And Yusik still uh, he's still demanding that that is a wakazashi and <laughs> not actually a kitchen knife. Shigefusa san is this blacksmith uh, knife maker, kitchen knife maker in the Sanjo area. I was fortunate enough to actually see them in person back in right before the old pandemic craziness started it. Kitaeji, so it's got layers of steel on the outside, 240 millimeters in the length. Um, it's got very nice, um, I think Masayuki san forged it. That's how his son, the second son, forges most of uh, most the uh, most knives. It's got very thick tang right here and tapers like quite drastically to the spine here. It's oh my god! But we're catching up on questions. We're only twenty four no. minutes behind. Twenty four minutes. It's only twenty four minutes. Very oh my god! This is yeah. But yeah, I don't have uh, this one here. Is the fifteen sixty five? James is saying the garage sale has so much exciting stuff this year. Can't wait! I am really impressed with the selection. That we have this year, and I I know you know we say that every year, blah blah blah. But like, I'll just I'll just enlarge the camera. So like, we have tables over here. That table, about half of it is layered two layers deep, and there are no doubles here. These are all 
Yeah. Single knives, there's no duplicates. And then we have this eight foot by three foot table over here. Those are just the custom handle, you know, super pretty one of a kind knives. So we have, we definitely have more, I would say, than the last two garage sales. Yeah, we, you know, since we can't visit Japan, we, I have, I, I get a privilege sometimes because, you know, I speak their language, um, get to talk to them over the internet and see what they have and, you know, what they've been working on and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Rob, Rob's a big fan of the, uh, the Usuba, the 240 Usuba. Everyone, every, it's such a nice knife. One, so. I don't even like love single bevel knives. No, and, no, no. And I think it's super, super, super cool. Uh, Lorenzo saying nerd hour question. Mm. I have a one thousand and a four thousand stone, and both have turned out to be dipped in the center and sloped slash wedge shaped. Any tips on correcting my sharpening technique to avoid this? Um, if it's like slanted or it's just like a little bit of a, as long as it's flat, it's fine. Right. As long as it's flat, you probably start yeah. to lose. It doesn't have to be level. It yeah. just has to be yeah. flat, all in yeah. the same plane. Yeah, because yeah. some sharpeners, they even tilt their uh, sharpening station up a little bit or down Ooh. a little bit. It's, it depends on who you're talking to. Like Sakai guys like to have that, um, the, the, what's call it? The, uh, this tilted downwards. They work that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, it, because like my uh, my Shapton 220 stone was flat, but it was flat, but it was flat a little bit like downwards towards my yeah one side, so it, yeah it's fine it's fine yeah um, yeah it's it, as far as tips to get get it flat like you know you can draw a grid on your stones and flatten them yeah if you're willing to invest some money get like a diamond truing plate I yeah. would say yeah. But yeah, uh, it's as long as it's the uh, yeah, it's tough. But you can probably work because when I'm sharpening, I don't just sharpen one uh, whole whole um, stone. I just do it like by sections. Right. So you could um, yeah, you, you could, could control focus where on the thicker parts yeah, of the stone. Yeah, control where you are sharpening as well. I also find I now this is usually doing straight razors, but even when I'm thinning out a knife. I flip my stone halfway through yeah. because I know I don't wear it evenly. So I try to balance that out by working on both sides of the stone yeah, yeah, as opposed yeah. to one, yeah, yeah. one half. Um, so Fred Bouchard, this is in reference to something we said, you know, like half an hour ago, but he says, so that means my Kumo Bunka bought in 2014 was definitely made by Anru. Can I see the difference in kanji again? Yeah. Well, the Kumo has the Masakagi on it. So it's different. Right. Yeah. So you won't be able Sorry. to tell the kanji. Yeah. It doesn't but, have his signature. Yeah. Yeah. But it would be I mean it's gonna be there's gonna be apprentice work involved, but he would have been the primary. Oh yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah, he's a he would be the ago? primary. Yeah. yeah. Um I think maybe Kevin yeah, answered this great. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Super thin. Yeah. Yeah. Um do we do this already? Can you guys do a compare contrast on the Saji slash Kurosaki rainbow bunkas, blade thickness, etc.? Uh, they are a lot different. Yeah. I feel like we're going to get this question a lot Monday, so we should just have them next to us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yep. Oh, down a little bit. There we go. Here? Okay, I got you in focus there. Kurosaki, Saji, Kurosaki, Saji. Okay, so let's do a few uh, fun, fun uh, stuff here. Okay, all right. So I feel Kurosaki is lighter. Let's see if it's true. Kurosaki, hundred seventeen gram. Okay. Saji. 124 grams. Oh my god, I can tell this how many grams That's difference? Impressive. Like seven gram difference? Yeah. But you can definitely tell the Kurosaki is uh, lighter. Okay. Alrighty. Spine thickness at the uh, at the heel. Make it zero. 
Saji? 1.96. Kursaki? Ooh, I think it's... 1.77. So, Kursaki is thinner and lighter. What does what it tells me is that this got a little bit more thinner taper and thinner grind. So it's go, it's much lighter. So it cuts the uh, cuts into food a little bit nicer. Like say root vegetables like um, carrots, potatoes. What I like about uh, Saji though, how he make this. Look, the texture and color. It's not all linear, right? Where Kursaki is a little bit more like all linear. Like it's all lines like this. And it's not like swirly. So that's really the, the big difference. Difference is on the blade because they use pretty much identical handle, except that little white part. There, yeah, but it's it's pretty identical. Yeah, pretty minor. Yeah, both VG10, both yeah, both are VG10. So it's yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's really fun actually. Thanks, thanks whoever asked or the uh, Colin. Yeah, Colin. Thanks for asking that question because I get to kind of see the difference. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know we we think about it, but we don't actually like analyze them that closely yeah. always. So the price, the uh, Saji is five twenty one. And the uh, Kurosaki hole is a three ninety nine, so there is about hundred like hundred twenty dollars difference. I think because again the uh, making this finish like it, the whole line is all swirly, it needs quite a bit more hammering. So right. that's probably why it's different. Uh, we've got a question about. From John May about the red handle one that Kevin was holding up. Oh, the uh, which I believe was this one, right? Oh yeah, probably oh, that one. Yeah. Asking if there was a blue one. We got some similar stuff that's got blue in it. That one. Yeah, there, there's a couple of similar ones, John. Each uh, each knife store are taking pictures of. So if you uh, go on the custom handles uh, collection page, you will be able to see all those, and uh, there will be a drop down menu that you can check, you can uh, select, and that will that will show you the exact handle that you are getting. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're trying to get good at that. Okay, we're getting caught up here, Daniel. Yes. I'm just going to run for a sec, but Daniel says, what are your thoughts on Kurosaki versus Teriyasu Fujiwara knives? Can't decide between one. They are, those two are pretty different. Those different. Um, Kurosaki-san, relatively young, up and coming. He, uh, not up and coming. He, he's, he's there already. Um, he likes to use the steels like the R2. That is the uh, high-speed powder steel. It's uh, almost like high-tech steels. Very thin and light. Um, it's a uh, some people find it it's too thin that can uh, chip may may chip a little bit easier. Uh, Fujara san depends on the line, slightly thicker than the Kurosaki's. Um, and um, he forges really nicely, could be a little bit rough, and in, in terms of the sharp, like not. Not the edge edge, but um, like the surface or the beveling and stuff like that could be a little bit rough. Um, you got the nice, you got the little feel of the handmadeness, um, but he actually forges really really hard, and he treats the steel really hard as well, so that the like, holds the edge very long. So you're kind of looking at two different things, like, like, but. Um, if you want that knife to feel like real handmade, Fujara is great because you see actually little imperfections, right? Like how it's ground, and <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, if you like the, uh, I feel like a little bit of high tech steels and 
uh, the challenges that uh, Chris Oxon likes to do, like a uh, different hammer patterns and stuff like that, get uh, Chris Aki. If you like traditional and kind of want to see a little bit of imperfection on the blade, <laughs> want to see, sometimes I do, right? Like it kind of shows it's actually a handmade. Um, go for Hujara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, Sean Coots in Ottawa. I miss you, buddy. Uh, is saying, how many wah-handled Denka Sen tokens do we have? I'm trying to predict my chances of getting one. John is one of our staff in Ottawa, by the way. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> to double check. Just, just yeah. let us know. Yeah. Um, we'll let you know in a sec, John. Or Sean, sorry. Uh, Iggy is asking, which one of the Shizu Hamono? Oh, Shizu. Because uh, Iggy had a question for me. Now, so if you need to take a break or anything, you can take a moment. He's asking. She's a hamono? Yeah. For a point of reference, I have the uh, the Moritaka 240 Yuto. So he's saying, as a point of reference, how does either the 210 or 240 Shizu Hamono compare feel wise in the hand to the Moritaka 240? I know the different steel slash makers, just trying to get an idea of feel. Um, I use my. Moritaka 240 Guto a lot. I love it. It's an awesome knife, uh, but it's going to be a lot different than this guy. Oh, you're taller um, than me. Damn it. A little bit. I was going to actually go on around and hand you one. So that's the, uh, the Shizu Hamono. Let me just switch these cameras up here. Um, it actually feels more similar than I expected. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got that forward weight. That the Moritaka has. I don't think the belly is quite as flat. I really like my Moritaka Guto. Uh, the shape is kind of shockingly similar. Yeah, it's interesting. It's not quite as thick. This is a thinner knife, but it has a similar weight to the Moritaka. So, yeah, I, I like the feel of this knife. I still prefer my Moritaka. I do prefer the flatter belly on it. If you like to rock your blade more, you might prefer this knife. I do have, it's a different knife, but I do have the 240 Kiritsuke here because it's the closest knife we have in stock. Yeah, see, the Moritakas just feel better balanced to me. And I, I don't mean that they're like balanced at a certain point. They just feel, I don't know, they feel like I have a little more control over them. I like the Shizu a lot. It just feels, it feels very heavy kind of in the center here. Whereas my Moritaka feels a little more like the weight's distributed Throughout the blade, well, we got that as better way, better, better, you know, handmade with the tradition and everything, right? Yeah, they just their knives feel really good. Yeah, and I'm biased, obviously, but they do feel really, really yeah. fantastic. But I'm pretty surprised at how how well the cheese is made for the price. Yeah, as soon as I saw them in person, I was really impressed by them. Yeah. They're uh, they're nice. They're, yeah, they got that D-shaped handle, which I love. Yeah, so it's it's. it's that's really well made. Well yeah. yeah, they've got a little more of a straight. I don't know if you can see that, a straight profile. And then they just taper off there. Uh, so the edges are like completely straight, kind of from spine to the start of the bevel. And it tapers off. Uh, but it's got a decently tall bevel, so I feel like it would, it would feel pretty nice chopping through denser foods. I mean, it, the price is great. Like two twenty-seven for this guy is a great deal. And VG ten, easy to take care of. You know, if it was maybe going to be your first Japanese knife, this would be a good choice because you're not going to chip it too easily. Looked like an NAS that Nathan just had in hand. Yeah, that was a that was a Moritaka uh, Kiritsuke. Beautiful knife. Uh, definitely, you know, might be. Easily confused with the Takeda at first, like at a, at a quick glance, because the bubble's a little bit shorter than, say, this guy. Now, people might see the Moritaka and think that this is going to really be wedgy and cut, like have trouble cutting through thicker food, denser food. Uh, but I've never found that to be a problem. Are they are they tapered at all in they, their forging? When they force, they taper. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they, it's not, that's, I guess, one main difference between the Shizu Homono is that. It seems sort of the same thickness all the way all the way along this face here. 
Whereas the Moritaka has a very slight taper from the spine down to the start of the bevel. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting all the Japanese terminology for this, but from here to here is a very slight taper that's actually forged into the blade. And so there's not like a hard lip where the bevel starts. It's noticeable, but it's not like a speed bump when you're cutting denser foods like potatoes. So you can get into like fast chopping really comfortably and, and not really have any problems with it. Yeah, fooled by the handle. <laughs> there's definitely some similarities with the Takeda here. And it's got a similar finish too, especially, especially when you see it on camera. Oh, what else did we have here? I think we're through most of our questions. What is your most discounted scratch and dent knife, Nato? Well, half price is the uh, most, um, most. Yeah, fifty percent uh, off. Yeah, fifty percent off. Um, I think the best deal is probably this Kiri. Yeah, the Kiri Yuto. Kiri Yuto. I worked quite a bit. This is a pretty great deal too. Oh, that, oh yeah. <laughs> this Mugen, this Mugen was in the Kiri. Wasn't that and somebody absolutely demolished it and uh, was uh, wanted to return it. We don't usually take back used knives, but sometimes you have a, a situation that demands it. So uh, we fixed now to not we fixed now to fix <laughs> two very sizable chips that were like you know the size of the tip of my pinky each, and ground those out and I then to take a picture. re beveled it. <laughs> Picture. And uh, yeah, there's a nice taper to it. Yeah. But yeah, these are the most discounted. These are, I think, both 50% off. Yeah. So is this uh, Mizu? Um... Uh, John, you do want the Mugen. I have uh, I have a Mugen 240 Guto. And it's awesome. Maybe it's a 210. No, it's a 210. You need a Mugen. They're great. We don't get them anymore, sadly, but they are wicked nice. Oh, well, talking about Mugen... Oh yeah, we do still have some left. And also, yes, Hatsu Kokoro Hapori oh. new knife line that we are going to carry. Uh, this is kind of a, you know, first appearance. Hapori, same as the Mugen uh, old Mugen knife, right? This is made by the same people who made Mugen. Oh, cool. So it's the same knife, basically. Well, without any fanciness. Well, without the handle, too. But the, uh, yeah, this one here is 322. Half 40, 322 is fantastic steel. Half 40 is this type of steel that's really, really hard. And so it keeps the edge very nice and long. Yeah. It's hard for us to sharpen. Yeah. But the, uh, it's great for the customers. Yeah. Okay, um, it is quarter to six mountain time. Uh, there are no more questions. So we are going to be live again at 8 a.m. mountain time on Monday, uh, Monday, May 17th. Uh, that's when the garage sale kicks off. We're going to have the same setup here. We'll have all these knives around us. So if you have more questions to ask, if there's more knives you want to see, you can pop them in the chat then. And we'll be able to help you out. Uh, the garage sale runs all week. It runs from the 17th to the 24th. Now it starts at 8 a.m. online. So, and that's mountain time. So, if you want a very specific knife, you got to jump on there right at 8 a.m. and snag it because it is going to go quick. Um, other stuff like some of the great deals and knives that we get a little more regularly, uh, we'll have those for longer. We might have them throughout the week or at least for the day or a couple of days. But the sale does run for eight days. It runs from the 17th to the 24th. There's great stuff to be had the whole time uh, from, from the beginning to the end. So don't feel like if you miss out at the first thing uh, that you're going to miss the whole sale. There's going to be lots of other great stuff. Um, <laughs> ellipses, we will add some lights to make Kevin extra shiny. No, it, it'll probably look a little nicer. Uh, we're, we, we've, got a, we've got a capture app that we're going to use with this webcam. So uh, this camera will look a little bit better as well. Um, yeah, if there's anything you don't see online that you saw today that you're concerned about, uh, shoot me an email, nathan at knifeware.com, and uh, I'll, I'll, ch I'll look into it. Uh, I might not look into it till like 7 a.m. on Monday, but I will look into it. I'll do my best. There will be, I think, possibly some more photos going up before the sale, 
Uh, but if there is something that doesn't have a photo that you're concerned about, let us know. We'll see if we can get it done last minute. Um, John May, don't understand how people are so fast sometimes. Uh, yeah, add it to your cart. Like, be on the product page when the sale rolls over. Just constantly refresh the page, add it to your cart. Uh, make sure your autofill is on for your credit card and your 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 address and all that, because that'll really help speed up the process if you want a specific knife. Sometimes it's just a matter of luck. Uh, you know, it's it's the internet, so some of these things are a mystery. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to see uh, on Garage Sale Monday, let us know. We're going to be here for six or maybe even eight hours, starting at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. We've also got streams later in the week. Uh, the guys will be on Japanese Knife 101 on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we'll have another garage sale stream at 4 p.m. Uh, uh, Mountain Time on Thursday. On what day will it be? Uh, Thursday night, we'll have a knife sharpening class. The guys in Vancouver is always doing some Japanese knife sharpening basics. So they'll be on at 7.15 Mountain Time. Uh, and then Naoto's Nerd Hour will be back on Friday at 4 p.m. Sorry, you guys. Uh, we didn't have an episode this week, but we had to had to get all this garage sale stuff going. Uh, we spent about four hours earlier today setting it up and getting it ready to go. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody that tuned in. I uh, can't believe you all stuck around for so long, but we always appreciate it. Um, hope to see you all on Monday, even if you're just hanging out in the stream and um, asking questions, cheering us on. I'm sure we'll all, be, uh, we'll all be tired. It'll be a long day, but it'll be lots of fun. Uh, so have a wonderful weekend. Now, do you got any, any closing remarks? No, that's good. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on Monday. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, oh, yeah, uh, and you guys rock. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you. Have a great weekend. Yusik, I hope you get your stuff fixed. Uh, my pleasure, Aggie. Always happy to help. All right. Take it easy, guys. Have a good weekend.